A father watches his son win the same title he won 30 years later in one of the best finishes on the ice in the history of the MHSAA. I'm John Ross, and this is This Week in High School Sports, powered by Michigan Student Aid. Face off in the right circle. Cooper Gerhardt to take the draw. Comes on back to Zarnicki. Kept in. And there's a breakaway chance. Goal! Mason Zarnicki may have ended the drought for Powers Catholic. It comes with 4.6 seconds left. That was Joe Jason and MHSAA TV on the call as Flint Powers beat East Grand Rapids 3-2 in the MHSAA Ice Hockey Division 3 Finals. The game-winning goal came with just four seconds left. The win is Flint Powers' first in the championship game after finishing as the runner-up seven previous times. In Division II, Bloomfield Hills' brother Rice found themselves down 2-0 to Byron Center in the third period before roaring back to win 4-2. The title is Brother Rice's seventh on the ice. And in Division I, Detroit Catholic Central shut out Brighton 3-zip in a rematch of last year's title game. The Shamrocks have now won four straight MHSAA titles, and this year they became the first team in the 49-year history of the ice hockey tournament to not allow a playoff goal. DCC outscored opponents 30 to nothing during their playoff run. For more on the championship weekend at USA Hockey Arena in Plymouth, check out MHSAA.com. Game balls this week go to the Rockford Gymnastics team who captured a second straight team title. The Rams recorded the top score on vault, floor exercise, and beam on way to their fifth title since 2015. To Michigan Center's Adrian Putnam, he scored 23, including 13 in the fourth quarter as Michigan Center knocked off Napoleon for a boys basketball district title. And to St. Charles's Lena Harger, she scored 11 as the Bulldogs captured their first ever basketball regional championship. For high school seniors, the matchup of the year isn't on the field. It's actually online. That's right. When you fill out the FAFSA, you know, the free application for federal student aid, you could also be eligible for thousands of dollars in additional money from the Michigan Achievement Scholarship. Yep, nearly 80% of students who fill out the FAFSA may be eligible. Now that's a matchup we can all root for. Get started today at michigan.gov slash achievement. The Michigan Achievement Scholarship. It's a game changer. Our weekly Be the Referee feature takes a look at the fine art of officiating with registered official Paige Winnie. When watching a college or NBA game, the last two minutes of the game can seem like it takes forever, especially in recent years where more and more judgment calls made by officials are subject to instant replay. At the high school level, video is not used to make a ruling or confirm or overturn a call made during the course of the contest. The only time video review is used in basketball at the high school level is at the MHSAA semifinal and final games. In these games, video review can be used only to determine if a shot was released in time at the end of the fourth quarter or overtime, or if that shot was a two-point or three-point field goal attempt. The MHSAA believes that this very limited use of replay in these games at the very end of the tournament series in boys and girls basketball is the right call. Thanks, Paige. Now more than ever, we need officials. If you're interested, go to the MHSAA website now to register. In the pool, the Boys Lower Peninsula Swimming and Diving Championships were this past weekend. In Division I, Ann Arbor Pioneer won their third straight finals title. Senior Gabriel Sanchez Burks had two individual firsts and was on two relay winning teams for the Pioneers. In D2, Birmingham Groves narrowly defeated Detroit UD Jesuit. It was Groves' first swim and dive title since 2010. And in Division Three, Bloomfield Hills, Cranbrook, Kingswood knocked off East Grand Rapids, the defending champs. One of the highlights from the weekend came in Division Two. Gross Point South senior Logan Hepner repeated as the top diver. His win this year comes 30 years after his father, Chad, won a final championship in diving for GPS. For more on this and everything else, MHSAA, please check us out online. You've been listening to This Week in High School Sports, powered by Michigan Student Aid, a production of the MHSAA Network. Thanks for joining us. I'm John Ross. We'll see you next week.
And good afternoon, everyone. You're so used to saying good evening, Cal, but yeah. we are at the Breslin Center for the 2 p.m. tip-off between the uh, semifinal bound. They're here. They're more than bound. Hart Pirates at 24-3 and, and the Hemlock Huskies at uh, 24 and three as well. Looking forward to the first ever venture for the uh, Hart Girl Pirates to the uh, state semifinals. And uh, tell you what, we start talking about teams of destiny and boy, oh boy, you certainly got to put Hart maybe in that category, huh Cal? Yeah, I tell you what, John, they've had just such an outstanding season. Travis, Travis Rosema, the head coach and his staff have just done a great job. You know, they win the conference. They turn around, they win the district, they win the regional, they win the quarterfinal. 24-3, and three, like you said, playing great basketball right now. They're peaking at the right time. And uh, the Hart Pirate community, there's a bunch of them here already, all decked out in red up over my right shoulder. And uh, it's just exciting time to be a Hart Pirate because all they're doing in all their sports is winning. They really are doing that. We are in the final eight seconds of the matchup between Bishop Foley and Blissfield. Blissfield has had a significant lead for most of the game, but now it's tied up, or it's not tied up, but it's getting close. It's 45 yep. to 41 with just 8.1 seconds left. And we have a Blissfield girl at the line to be able to maybe put this one out of reach, but she misses a shot. So uh, down to just the final eight seconds here. Bishop Foley bringing the ball up court, a three-point attempt, and that's missed. And there's still .5 seconds left, so it looks like the uh, winner of our game between Hart and uh, and Hemlock will be playing Blissfield on Saturday at 4 p.m. And that's final. Yeah. Blissfield does win it, so they will advance to the finals. will be played right back here on this floor Saturday at 4 p.m. And they will play the winner of the game that we're about to uh, bring you about one half hour from now, Cal. Yeah, Blissfield will be a worthy opponent of whoever they are playing. They are athletic. They're long. They have a couple of girls that are tall that can play down in the lone post. they got some great guards. And you do not get to be the Final Four in the state of Michigan in your division without being good and without being versatile. And Blissfield is just that inside-outside game. They run the floor very, very well. They will be a tough matchup here between the winner of the Hart and Hemlock game here in about a half an hour. Let's kind of trace the... Um the Hart Pirates journey here after they won the district championship. Of course, they played up in Shelby in the uh, regionals, and uh, they wound up defeating Kent City in a regional final by the score of 45 to 41. And uh, in that game, that kind of showed the, the spunk that this Hart team has. You're going against a, a veteran team in Kent City that had two 1,000 point scorers uh, on the floor in, their, in Gears and, um, and Bowers. And uh, they were able to, again, total team basketball. And that's pretty much been the way it has been for Hart is you certainly you've got Hovey who's leading them in scoring uh, about 18 points a game somewhere in there. Um, but the, the cast of characters, and I do mean that in the, um, <laughs> the best sense yeah. of this Hart team has just really pulled them through. No, it certainly has. And normally this game seems to go through Hovey, but don't forget you also got Abby Hicks there who can so valuable to this team. Just a little guard there, and she's just a junior also, so she's going to be back with Hovey next year. But Hicks the other night led them in scoring. I think she had 18 points. I don't know how many steals, assists. Hicks had a complete game, which propelled Hart to that win the other night, sending them here to the quarterfinals here against Hemlock. And also, you got to take a look here. A girl who I'm really high on, and that is, she is just, uh, she's a senior, but Aspen Botel plays yeah. great defense. She's right. small. She's quick. She's tenacious. Yeah, she, she really works is. really hard. We have seen them a few times this year. Uh, she's capable of playing great, great defense and really giving the opposing team's point guard fits. We have certainly seen that happen different times throughout the year, too. And then you got Van Ockmal, who's just a great, a great player. And um, who am I forgetting? Copenhagen. Coker. Chloe Coker, Coker yes. comes yep. in. Yep. You know, she starts. We'll give you quality minutes. Copenhaver came in the other night, had back-to-back -back offensive rebounds. Right. Huge offensive rebounds, which kept a possession going and helped them run plus three minutes off the clock in that third quarter. Yeah, really did. Uh, talking about individually here, uh, you have Addie Hoffey. Uh, Addie, Ho <laughs> Addie Hovey, <laughs> uh, she's leading the team. 18 points uh, a game, nine rebounds, almost a double-double, three assists. You mentioned Abby Hicks, 15 points. 
Six rebounds a game, four assists. Aspen Botel, 11 points, four assists. And boy, ice water in her veins when it comes to the free throw. She literally hit four crucial free yeah, throws during that. that Kent City game that was the difference maker there and uh, wound up scoring, I believe, eight points down the stretch. That And you figure when you only win 45 to 41, how important those eight points were and those four free throws. Yeah, the four free throws came late in the contest, and those were critical, crucial makes there. By uh, by her to uh, help propel that team here onto the regionals. And of course, we know they get through the regionals, get through the quarters. Here we here we are at the Breslin Center. The parts out here and now they're getting their picture taken from the official MHSAA photographer. Right. They're all lined up and uh, oh yeah. So I tell you what, we're gonna get a uh, we're gonna get an interview here. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, they're they're all lined up really nice here. And this will be a picture that they will remember for the rest of their life. So they really tell will. you what, we're going to bring in Scott. Do you want to do Scott? No, I'll, I'll, I, I, no I, I don't care. Okay. I'm going right. to give the headphones to Scott. All right, here we go. It's you and I. All right. <laughs> yeah. Can you nerd. be nice to me now? Uh, as nice as you were to me on the way down. <laughs> so you're not going to no. be nice. <laughs> I hit one bump and you were already chirping at me. Like, hey, Van Single, uh, you going to hit every bump on the way to Lansing? All I ask is, is a smooth ride. Smooth a ride. Smooth, uneventful ride yeah, on the way here. Well, we, I'm no, paying you good like, money for, for the chauffeur service. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Send Brent, <laughs> send Brent the extra bill, he'll, right? He'll, yep, just invoice Brent. He'll just take care of it. Brent, yeah. I tell you what, you work all the time, do you not? I mean, the other night we rode together to, um, I can't remember where we went, but you, you worked on the way back. And then now you worked on the way down, and you're going to here all the way down, and you're going to turn around and work out all the way back. When do you get any time for rest? Um, well, last night, my wife and I went out to dinner, which was nice. We tried to make that time happen. And then I got home and somehow I ended up on the couch. And no, she didn't kick me onto the couch. Yeah. <laughs> but I was watching some basketball, some of those first four games. Yeah. I think it might have been about 9 o'clock. And I was out like a light until about 11, 30, 12 o'clock. But then I couldn't get back to sleep. Oh. And I was up to about 3, 3.30, 4 a.m. And then slept solid for three more hours. And when you were up, you were working. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Pretty much. You are, you're a dedicated servant to high school athletes around here. Yeah. So, okay, I'm going to take you. Uh, we're, let's go this way. High school football, high school basketball, the playoffs. What do you like better? I'm going to put you a little bit on the spot. I'm seasonal. So I like... Whatever is in season. Okay. I'm just I just kind of always been that way because I, I grew up playing baseball, basketball, football. Yeah. So those have kind of always been the ones yep. I've known the best. Yeah. Not Ravana. that I don't like. Yep. At, at Ravana. Yeah. Not that I don't like the other sports, but I do. You know the other sports to cover, yeah. but those are the ones I know. So those okay. are the ones I, kind of have a place yeah. in my heart, I guess. And if you venture through the halls of Ravana in the athletic section, you are there still the winningest pitcher ever, at Ravana, whether a single season, whether 12 and two record. Yep, yep. That's Somehow they put my name up there. They put it in, um, <laughs> like, some kind of printed, printed paper so they could easily rip it off the is, wall and throw it away. It's it not is? It's not on a plaque or anything well, like I, that. Well, it's, it's not I got, permanent. I tell you, I think the other nine guys below you will be coming <laughs> off before you're going to come off because you're sitting up you're sitting up there at number one. That's yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah. So some, something I always talk about is coaches ask them about, your fam, about their families. Normally it does not get me into trouble. But I'm going to ask you, tell us about your family, because they're the ones that really, I mean, they, they have to sacrifice because you're always gone and always working. Tell us about your family. Yeah, they always do. And like like I said last night, my wife and I actually went out for lunch and we went out for dinner. So she got a, a double double dose. And, nice. You know, and the kids, you know, you just try to, you got to make time. You know, pockets of time here yeah. and there, you know, pick them up at the bus stop. Maybe they love going to Wesco, um, especially okay. the younger one. The 12-year-old yeah. loves yep. going to Wesco getting treats and stuff there but take them to get ice cream go for a bike ride go to the beach we like to go to the beach me and the kids so okay. so it's just all those kinds of things so um you know you just try to make time but they're definitely the ones sacrificing the most and they're the Absolutely. not to sound too cheesy but they're the mvps because i couldn't yeah. couldn't do this and do this the way i do it without their blessing yeah without their support absolutely let's talk about this game two teams with the with the h out front Hart and hemlock what Give us your thoughts of this contest coming up here. Well, I know that um, we'll talk about Hemlock first just because they're the opponent that maybe our listeners don't know as much about. Yeah. They come 
front, they play in a tough area. There's some good girls basketball in the Saginaw area. They, if you look at their schedule, I believe their two of their losses are to um, Frankenmuth and Freeland. Whitehall lost to Freeland in okay. the in the regional semifinal, and then Frankenmuth beat Freeland in the regional final, and that's two of Hemlock's losses right there. If you look, if you look at this, I don't know if you guys already discussed this or not, but let me see one, two, three, four, five. Like week in the sixth game, Freeland beat. Beat Hemlock 43-39, and then Freeland beat Whitehall 51-33 or something like that. Okay. Which you can't always compare scores, but um, so good tradition. When I was working at the Kalamazoo Gazette, uh, we covered a school of Three Rivers, and they played Hemlock in the semifinals here. Okay. One time, so I've seen them before, way back in the day, but just very solid tradition. And then Hart, of course, first time here. You know they're. Yeah. Um, they had been, the last time they won a regional final was actually in uh, 1992. Gotcha. Um, I was headed somewhere with Hemlock. Hemlock was supposed to be here two years ago. They had a great team, and we're in 2020, I should say. They had a great team. They were bound, they were headed here, and then this thing called COVID happened and uh, shut down the rest of their season. So they, I think, is this their first trip? It should have been their second. I believe it's what it was. Well, they were, this would be their second, at least. Okay. Because they're in the semifinals, like I said, when oh, they played Three right. Rivers. Yeah, my bad. My bad. But that was, that was like in the early 2000s, somewhere around yeah, there. Not that long ago. Yeah. Not that <laughs> long ago. And take a look at Hart. We've seen them now numerous times. What is Hart going to have to do to win this afternoon, you think? Just do what they've been doing, you know, playing that pesky defense where they're handsy, you know, getting in passing lanes, yeah. doing oh, yeah. all those things, um, and then just sharing the ball. Like, they've, they've, they've shared the ball so well, you know, throughout throughout the season, throughout the tournament especially. So just be just be confident. And they, uh, they say, I don't know if you read the story that we wrote, but one big thing that Travis Roseman was talking about after the quarterfinal was they have an acronym called um, DM. GB doesn't matter, get better. Yeah, I did see that. So, yes. like after the game, he said, "Doesn't he, he was? I don't know if you saw the video that I got where there he's talking to the team afterwards. It's kind of hard to hear him, but he said, "Doesn't matter." He goes, "It doesn't matter. They were ranked number one. Doesn't matter. They got a girl going to play at Ohio yeah. State. You know, it matters about what we do. You know, we're heart, and you know, you know that that's and that's we've got and and that's what matters is what who yeah. we are. Do you think it's gonna?" matter do you think it's going to be a factor this afternoon both these teams first time playing on this floor there's no background it's an open background behind it. everybody's probably seen the breslin center but that's the first time i believe for them they've shot in a big arena like this where there's no immediate backboard or you know wall you think that's gonna affect this, this game at all yeah that can uh, mess with your depth perception and take a while to get used to so yeah that could be a little bit of a struggle for a little bit until they get acclimated. Obviously, they're out there right now in warm-ups, both teams, and uh, Hart's right in front of us. They're the visiting team. They're wearing their uh, their black uniforms today. But um, And we got some Hemlock, I think, parents behind us. So, And actually, they moved. Looks like they moved the Hart students behind yeah. their bench, which was they good. Did. Yep, absolutely. Because they had them staged, I think, over behind us for a while. Yes, sir. This game is so fast. When you sit right, uh, literally, we're five feet from the floor. It's so much faster when you sit on the floor. Now, granted, these are great teams with a loaded athletes. The previous game had some great athletes on it also. But I tell you what, this game is fast when you sit right here. Oh, it sure is. And yeah. uh, one thing I'm noticing, this happens a lot, and maybe they're not doing it, but you'll see there's two three-point arcs. One is the college one, the deeper one is. Yeah. The other one, the closer one's the high school one, but a lot of these girls – are, are shooting from behind both lines. Yeah, they are. You can kind of see that. That the, One of the guys came over and uh, you know, told the girl, says, hey, you can move up. That is, yeah, that's that's a different line there. Then yeah. she's like, oh, okay. So, yep. yeah, that's something different, too. You see a lot of kids set their feet, look down, to make sure they're behind the line. Will they be an extra, what is that, 18 inches back further? Yeah. Probably. You, I don't know if you saw the TikTok we posted, but Billy Mann swished one from yeah. press row here in I pregame. Did. If you, if you guys haven't checked it out, go to the Catchmark Sportsnet yeah. TikTok page and see uh, Billy shoot, put on his dancing and shooting skills. Billy is so multi-talented, isn't he? He is. That guy's got so he, many he, talents. He's multi-something. I don't know if talent's the right <laughs> word, but something. Gotcha. So, 
Oh, what else do we got here? We are just a little 15 minutes here from uh, game time. Looking forward to this one here this afternoon, Catchmark Sports. Got to thank Brent Rath, the managing editor of Catchmark, making this all possible. And our, of course, our sponsors. Can't do this without our sponsors. So Yes, sir. Yeah. I don't think officials are going to be an issue this afternoon. The further up you go, normally you get really good officials. They don't make too many mistakes. No, and usually you don't notice them, and that's a good thing. When an official's not yeah. noticed, yeah. that's usually, yeah. and that's not an offense against them. Mm -hmm. That just means that they're doing their job and you're not yeah. no, they're not making it about them. Yep. Well, John's b b busy visiting over here. Let's talk about spring sports. That's coming up. Yep. Good softball teams. I know probably Oak Ridge, Oak Ravana. Ridge Ravana. Yeah. Those two jump out at you right away. Yep, they do. Um, Hart's been solid in recent years. North Muskegon's been solid in recent okay. years as well. So they'll have good teams. Um, you know, Oak Ridge and Ravana kind of set the set the stage. Oak Ridge has been doing that for a long time yeah. in softball. Ravana the last couple years has really come on, and they got a group that thinks can make a deep run this year. Talk about baseball. <coughs> some, some Excuse me. Baseball, yeah, you've got Montague and North Muskegon. Were, um, or Montague was the league champ last year. North Muskegon was right there. Yeah. North Muskegon returns a boatload. They're going to be probably, they have them in divisions now, though. That's different. There's 14 schools. It was just the eight schools last year. Yeah. Now there's the two seven school divisions. So North Muskegon and Montague will be split up. And they'll play in a non-divisional doubleheader, but um, those are kind of the class of the conference. Oak Ridge traditionally, throughout the years, has been the one of the programs to beat. Yeah. So it's uh, their head coach, Barry. Is Brandon still, Barry. Brand, is he still there? He's still there. Yeah, yeah. He's a good coach. He's a very good coach. Yes, he is. Uh, track and field. Track and field. Hart boys. Um, they're coming off a boys cross country state title. Yeah. The Hart girls won the state title on track last yep. year after winning a, a number of girls cross country state titles. Um, look for Hart. Can they pull the double, boys and girls, maybe? Okay. Whitehall boys, I was talking to Nate Bowley yesterday. He's a senior on the team and they've got so they've got 70 kids on their boys team. Oh my goodness. And wow. they're gonna be loaded. They got a shot to maybe make a run in a state title this year. Okay. So my goodness. track and field's looking pretty good in the conference. Golf. Golf, we've got, that seems to be a little more wide open. Um, Whitehall has been solid. Montague has had a solid squad. North Muskegon, I'm sure I'm forgetting maybe some others, but you look at a guy like uh, Brady Tate, Brad Tate's son. I believe yeah. he's a sophomore this year, but he's a very good player. He's he's a guy, to, he's a kid to look out for this year to keep an eye yeah. on him. Now I also learned that one of our uh, one of our compadres, uh, Connor Rath, is coaching up in Shelby. He is. He's an assistant coach up there. He went for the head coaching job and. They're like, well, we want to groom you first under, yeah. uh, you know, Fred Inglis, and, and we'll let you do that. But yeah. Connor's pretty mature for his age. He's he doesn't think like an 18 year old. So okay. he's, uh, you know, watch out for him though. Once he's focused and determined to do something, he's going to do it. Gotcha. Yeah, he appears to be that way. Yeah. He gets locked in. It's like, yeah. yeah. So that might be the no pressure, Connor, but that might be the start of a dynasty. Up right. There. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. We'll see. So. We're getting serious now. We got about 12 plus 12 minutes. minutes Do you yeah. guys want me to put your uh, radio partner on? Sure. Here we go. Here. Here we go. No, no. Get, no. I'll let you and him talk. Okay. Okay. I gave me to give you to me. You're now up. No, I was going to give up my headset to you. Yeah. But uh, I'm not sure what you guys have talked about a whole lot. <laughs> Did you talk about this game? No, not as much. We a little bit, but well, we talked about some different things. But um. Yeah, we were just talking about Hemlock and their tradition a little bit, and then Hart, first time here, yeah. and what, what's, what it's going to take for them to win, and we talked about um, just, you know, the active defense, active hands, yes. getting in passing lanes, being passed, um, the help defense, sharing the ball on offense, because that's what they've done so well throughout the tournament. Right. The one thing that uh, saw your story on uh, with, uh, with Coach Rosma, doesn't matter, get better. And boy, you know, it... I'm, I'm sure that they're playing with kind of a chip on their shoulder to some extent. Like, they've had this fantastic year. They're in the state semifinals, but yet they feel like they've always been the underdog. Maybe not get, maybe kind of the Rodney Dangerfield of the, the girls set, right. maybe that way. And uh, they've been able to use that, and it's it's just propelled. You know, whatever you gotta, whatever you got to do, right? Yep, and we discussed that briefly, too, but that's... It doesn't matter. We, we, we got to control what we can do. You can't control right. what the opponent does. You can control how you react to what sure. they do. That's that's the only thing you control is your effort and attitude. Is are the only two things you can control. 
and the, the role players on this team, I'm sure you talked about this too. I mean, uh, Copenhagen uh, Haver has that huge uh, game, you know, not necessarily point wise, but comes in off the bench, makes some big stops, makes some big saves. Grabbing rebounds. Grabbing rebounds. Uh, ben Achmel, um, that you can just go right down the line. And, uh, you know, you look at, you get in situations where you wonder when you talk five players and even the, the big teams, the so-called big teams, the number one ranked teams, yeah, they all have that superstar or two, right? But I don't know. I mean, person for person, five on five, when you talk five and then maybe go to the bench for the sixth or seventh person, I think Hart matches up quite well with just about anybody, don't you? Yeah, and you look at, you got the Abby Hickses of the world, you know, who are one of the leading players, Addie Hovey. Right. And then Aspen Botel even. But they don't win that game Tuesday against Buchanan unless you have the the, the, the boost from Mariana Van Ockmo. You've got her. You've got, like you said, Copenhaver. You had Chloe Coker. Yeah. You know, made some big plays. I mean, Mariana, she had 10 points in that yeah. game, and she doesn't average 10 points. Right, right. But she hit some big shots and made a couple key saves and, you know, saving the ball, hustling, saving the ball from going out of bounds, saving possessions. And the thing that's impressive too, Scott, you know this being closer to them as well on a daily basis pretty much, is they just don't seem to be awed by anything. I mean, they were, I got a kick out of watching them over at uh, at uh, Bangor. Uh, they're out there kind of dancing around, having a little bit of fun. I mean, just very, very loose. And I'm not saying that they're necessarily dancing around today, but you look on their faces, hey, this is a business trip, right? I mean, it's not its not like they're all mouth wide open and, oh my gosh, this is a Breslin Center, even though they haven't been here before. I mean, they just, they, nothing seems to all, nothing seems to be too big for these girls. No, and this is something that they were dreaming about and could see maybe possibly coming from a young age. Like right. talking to people who saw them in middle school, they're like, yeah, we watched them when they were coming up, even people not, not from Hart. Right. Like North Muskegon and other places that played against Hart, and they're like, yeah, we knew they were going to be a problem, and and that that's meant in a good way. Right. Meant that's going to be a problem for opponents because they're like, this is a good group. Yep. And no, I don't, I don't think they're surprised or wowed by the environment. We'll see once the yeah, clock true. starts and they start playing how they handle the, 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 the uh, you know, the scenario and, and everything and um, venue and everything like that. But they haven't been um, intimidated by anything yet. No, and, and I'll share with you because we shared it uh, during the uh, quarterfinal game. I mean, all the way up, I was talking about us riding up together and kind of going through the scenarios. And they were quite frankly against uh, against Buchanan, some scenarios there that we thought, boy, this might not even be pretty. But uh, they didn't tell it to heart because they battled all the way. I was a little concerned, maybe more than a little concerned, in the first quarter when uh, when Buchanan got up by six or seven, something like that. You could kind of feel it slipping, and I think we even made the comment that hey, this is the time you got to keep them in, you know, you got to keep them in the same area code. And boy, they did that, and then they came out in the second half and had that went to a ball control offense and just did what they did to to adjust to that. So, yeah, I mean. And, and the, the difference today in the trip up here, I says, I'm not counting these girls out, to, not that I did before, but hey, and we said it before, once you get past the number one ranked team, you're on the floor with anybody, right? I mean, you're theoretically, hey, anything can happen. And each game's different. I mean, yeah. each matchups are everything too, just like in college basketball, they say matchups matter, they do. Right. It depends, you know, what they're, how your strengths line with your opponent's strengths and weaknesses. So. You know, maybe you're a better matchup for an opponent than you are another yeah. opponent, but each game's different and you can't, you think you, okay, you beat the number one team, so you're feeling good about yourself, but you're not done yet. You can't just assume right. that the next opponent's gonna be a lesser opponent. Yeah, exactly. And you know, they, they do kind of remind me, at least from the outside, I'm talking about the Huskies, of maybe a Kent City team where they have two players that have a thousand points on the floor at the same time. I'm thinking, of course, of Gears and uh, Bowers back in Kent City, and they have the Watson girl and Finkbinder girl with a thousand here. So, and you start playing that game, the common opponents, and the, the one that I saw was Lake City that was, uh, you know, they, they defeated they defeated Hart uh, earlier in the year. And, uh, yeah, it was the second to last regular season game. Yeah. I remember uh, Travis Roseman said they didn't play particularly well in that game, which you're going to maybe say that when you lose, but I don't think that was one of their better efforts. And even in the tournament, they haven't been scoring at a clip that maybe they had early in the year, but sure. a lot of that has to do with opponent too. Right, right, right. Well, I'll tell you what, Scott, thanks for everything. And hey, we'll let you get down to your, your perch over there. We got Bill Mann here, so you got double coverage. We're here. I think Catchmark's got this about as covered as well as you can cover it, right? We do. We, we we've do. got it covered top to bottom. Fantastic. So look for us on uh, 
you know, on our social media channels throughout the game as well. We'll have updates and stuff like that. And then we'll also have a po coverage immediately right after the game's over. So. And I think you're going to have a little humorous video there with our friend Billy Mann. I don't want to give it away. I don't want to spoil it. But uh, some masterful uh, shooting on oh, that one. Oh, we did, yep. So there you go, folks. But Thanks, guys. Over. Thank you, Matt. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right, that's quite oh. that's quite a uh, operation there, just getting headsets all around over the place, isn't it? That's was musical headsets there. Yeah, I know, it really was. Yeah, man, oh, I, man. You can't hear the interviews. I mean, like, no, you I, probably couldn't hear Scott and I, no. and I couldn't hear you and Scott. But I got a chance to talk with uh, Joe Tannis. He's going to be our halftime interview. Nice, uh, okay. So he came over here today. I just want to let you know I'm going to be here. That was great. Saw a couple of uh, heart folks coming down some took a, a selfie of well not really a selfie but a shot of uh, you and uh, Scott talking and oh really I, th I might have got in the picture I kind of leaned over and waved and all that stuff Hi. so uh, <laughs> so we got that and uh, talked to our old friend Joe Jason Joe Jason's here I covering the uh, covering the game for the uh, for the MHSAA there uh, I believe he's doing their television mm -hmm. if I'm not sure or I don't know if it's television or radio but it was good catching up with Joe we worked with him for a couple of years on the uh, Greater Muskegon Sports yeah. uh, Sports Network, so he uh, he thanked us for his our time with them. Wanted to know how really? we're doing. I said really great, and uh, he says yeah. He's, I said oh if you ever need a couple of rundown announcers for any yeah. any event that uh, he said you consider yeah. sometime, and he said oh, we'll, we'll do that. So yeah, well that was nice though. We've uh, yeah, jo we, Joe's got a face and a voice for TV. Oh man, he really he's a, does. He's a, he's a, he's a nice yeah, he's looking a, man. He's a good looking guy. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Cal says I can that. say that confidently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I'm, I mean, I am, so I'm, you know, it's right, like, hey, right, come right. on. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good-looking man. He's a good-looking man. Yeah, there you go. Good um, thing, but people we, are going, does that guy No, I have a beautiful wife at home? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's talk. I don't know how much we talked about Hemlock here a little bit, but uh, it starts with one of the, they got two very good guards, both of them with 1,000 points in their career. Starts with uh, Reagan uh, Finkbeiner. She's averaging 17 points a game, four assists, five steals. And then you have uh, Chloe Watson. She's a, 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 point, a, a guard as well, uh, sometimes a forward, averaging 14 points, four rebounds, four assists, a couple of steals. Both of these girls can hit from three-point range. They're shooting about 36% apiece from the three-point range. Any time, Cal, I think the measuring stick there is if you can get in the in the mid to high 30s from three-point range, that's that's pretty much getting it done isn't it yeah 33 and above if you're yeah. 33 and above you're good to go you start dipping below 33 and then you're better off trying a two-point shot but and if you're in the teens bag it <laughs> yeah go away from it bag it they have a, a couple of sisters on the team what would girls uh, basketball be without some sisters huh well uh, you know the other night we had three uh, three Car sets of sisters is that how yeah. you say that yeah yes. Yep, we had three three Carsons, or is it Corsons? No, two Carsons, three Smiths, and wasn't there was a two other ones, wasn't there? There was, yeah. Yeah, there was. A, it was a, amazing. So you got to, but uh, the the sisters on this team are uh, Lauren and Hannah uh, Borsenick. Uh, Lauren's averaging 10 points, eight rebounds. She's the center, a tall girl. Uh, Hannah Borsenick's averaging uh, seven points a game, and then they got a girl that comes off the uh, off the bench. Her name is Victoria. Hoffy, I believe, is how they pronounce it. We'll find out here in a shortly. She comes off the bench, averages five points off the bench. So you know that she's one of those girls that you know you see kind of all the time at one of these teams yeah. that you know maybe she doesn't start, but she comes in and she's going to play a lot of minutes and she's going to get her points. Uh, and she's 41 percent from the three-point arc, so Ooh. she can give you some uh, some instant offense off the bench. Yeah, that's shooting the ball really well. If you're at 41 percent, that's getting it done. That's that. That's when John, when it's like, when that's the green light. Yeah. You don't even got to look at your coach. You get above 40, and that's your coach that's just going, yeah, you pretty much have an automatic green light with the exception of game time situation. You know, do, do we need a bucket? Don't we need a bucket? Do we want to stall? Right. Do we want to just start working on this? Not so much stall, but just start to work on the clock. Sure. 20, 30, 40 seconds at a time. And kudos to Hart the other night. They kind of ran a a delay, yeah. but I love to call it delay to turnover <laughs> or stall to turnover because yeah. it seems so many teams just cannot run a delay and run it effectively. Right. And Hart ran over three minutes off the clock without turning the ball over. Now, they put up a shot, to put up a couple shots, and then we had Hart, we had, that was, um, 
Oh, who was it? Had Copenhaver. Yeah. Had the two great big off the two great offensive uh, rebounds for them. But yeah, they had over three minutes off the clock with only a couple shots put up. And kudos to Travis Roseman because he started working on that early in the third quarter. He really did. He started working on that delay, and it worked out perfect for him. He's coached really, really well here coming. Yeah. I mean, all season, especially coming down the stretch here. Made some amazing timeouts the other night. Took timeouts at the perfect time. Yep. And he has done a phenomenal job of coaching this year. He's got a great staff. But, you know, it all goes through Travis. It all starts with him, man. It he's really does. He's done a fantastic job. Speaking of coach, uh, Scott Newman, or Newmeyer rather, is the coach for Hemlock. He's been there 10 years, 177 wins, 57 losses. They have finished deep in the tournaments. You talked about the COVID season last time. Uh, and then you have Travis, who has been coaching for five years and something like 58 wins uh, he has. Uh, no, I'm sorry, more than that. I shortchanged him. 89 wins for uh, Travis in his fifth year and 28 losses. Looks like we're getting set for the uh, national anthem, so we'll send it down to the floor here for the uh, MHSAA. You're watching, listening to Catch Mark Sports Net here. And they're getting ready to do the uh, national anthem. The lights are dimming here. And uh, I'll tell you what, Cal. The lights are dimming. The lights are dimming. The, the mood is being set. The music's playing. The music is playing. <laughs> let's, see, let's see how loud the PA guy is here for the national anthem. Oh, yeah. Let's go for yeah. it. <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll go down to the floor. Thank 
All right, just about set to get this one underway. John Russell, Cal Van Single here for Catchmark Sports Net. Great to have you along, yeah. all the folks back home. You know, there's a couple thousand people in here, John. I think right. there's six, seventeen thousand. 17,000. Right. And it is loud. Yeah. I could not imagine, and I've been to Big Ten games here before. Sure. But sitting down here on the floor, I could not imagine how loud it is when this place is packed. It's a Big Ten tournament game, whether it be like Michigan State playing Michigan or Purdue or Ohio State. I cannot imagine how loud this place would be when you are out on that floor. The electric environment here this afternoon. These two teams getting ready to battle. It's going to be Hovey, uh, Hovey rather, <laughs> jumping up against the boys neck, and it's controlled by Hemlock. Up top now is Kaylee Miller with it. She wheels around right side, being watched by Van Ockno. Gets it up top to number 24. That's Hannah Borzenek. And the ball is uh, stolen. stolen away. That's Qu Hicks getting in there, getting that, that steal. Here comes Van Ackmo over here to Aspen Botel. Tries a three, and nope, that one will not fall. Rebound pulled down by number 33, Lauren Borisen uh, Borsenek. Uh, Botel doing a nice job. She had a good look. It fouled. Tra oh, a travel. Okay. So yeah, back here in this possession, Botel had a good look. Left side, 19 feet away. Had a really good look. Let it go. Nice rotation. Nice art. Just a little bit off mark. Hart will put the ball in play 90 feet away. Yep, full court press, yeah. and it's going to be a turnover. Yeah, right away the ball over phone, and uh, Reagan Finkbinder has it for um, the Huskies. Finkbinder's one of their star players. Little lob pass down next to uh, Borzenek, and she shoots, turns, spins, and scores. That's uh, Lauren um, Borzenek, 6'2", junior. And yeah, uh, they did a nice job of getting her boasted up. Hicks played good defense on her, but, uh, you know, she's just big and athletic, so... She can get it done, and she did. Huskies on the board first, two to nothing. This is Mariana Vanakno getting it back to Botel. Asma Botel gets it up to Hovey. Hovey's going to ride right side, gets it back to Hicks. Hicks bounce pass to Botel, and she'll run it from up top. Well, they're trying to trap her yeah. up at the top of the key. Great pressure defense. And an offensive foul is going to be called on Botel. Oh, that'll be the first foul for her. First in the game here so far as we're just underway. So Hemlock on top, two to nothing, 645 left here in this first quarter here at the Breslin Center. Division three semifinal. The winner will play Blissfield on Saturday at 4 p.m. Driving down now is Miller. Miller, little hook pass to Borsnick. And she shoots and scores. One hands it in. That's uh, Hannah. And Hannah knocks it down. Six foot junior. So both of the Borsnick uh, uh, <laughs> sisters have scored. Gonna have a kick ball here by Hemlock. And Hemlock doing a nice job of getting their twin towers involved in that low post. And now it's just almost like a little bit of an old Kareem Abdul-Jabbar hook shot, wasn't it? Yeah. This is Hart with the ball in the front court, four to nothing. Hamlock leads, driving to the hole was Aspen Botel, misses a shot, rebound pulled down by Hannah Borz Borzenik. Yeah, I tell you what, nice job by Botel. Coming up that end line, stopped about five feet short of the rim and just left it a little bit short. Miller wheels it around right side, gives it to number 13. That is Regan Finkbinder, cross court pass, shot put up a three and scores number 11. That is uh, Chloe Watson, 5'10 senior, and she can nail it from three point range and she did there seven nothing Hemlock. Yeah, well, turnover. Stolen back away by Miller, puts up the shot, misses. There is um, number 11, Chloe Watson with it. She puts it up and scores and boy, Hemlock getting out to a nine to nothing uh, yep. lead. And, as you might expect, Travis uh, Rosema calling the timeout. I think Travis wanted one like about a minute ago, but they didn't have the ball. They couldn't get a right. timeout. So trying Travis to Travis will here. get them calmed down. All they got to do is get a bucket. They'll, they'll settle down. Things will start rolling their way again. Hemlock, a formidable opponent. You don't get to the semifinals by not being very, very good. The two big throws down low, they're going to be... Uh, Hart's going to have to adjust how they're going to handle that. They've really handled it very well so far. You know, trying to front, get in behind her, trying to take those passes away. But twice, Hemlock's got the ball into their two big girls. 
the sisters there, John, they've both of them have scored. They really have, boy. I'm yeah. sorry, and then you left Watson alone in the rotation as they rotated to the left side. You left Watson alone, couldn't quite get out there defensively. And she buries a long three. Yeah, the Borznik sisters are a handful for uh, Hemlock. And uh, we talked about it during the uh, game against, um, against Buchanan is you want to stay in the same zip code. That goes without saying, but you're down nine to nothing. Nothing has gone really right for you. No. And this can get away from you in a hurry. Um, and they just got to they gotta make some stops and get a get a bucket or two here. Yeah, they're only down nine. Fortunate for them, they have three and a half, more than three and a half quarters to go yet. Right. They just got, first of all, first thing first, get the ball across half court. Really good press here by Hemlock. Botel now gets a pass over to Coker. Coker, free throw jumper. It's, uh, I think it was tipped by one of the Borsnicks, and it comes back out to uh, to uh, he uh, Hemlock. Yeah, and Hemlock right there to get that defensive rebound. This is Hannah with it. Hannah trying to work it down to her sister. Stolen away Hovey. by Hovey. Good job getting in front, getting in that passing lane, and getting the steal. Nice job by Hovey. Long cross court pass. Over here to Van Ackmill. She'll let fly one. She misses. Rebound brought down by uh, Hannah. Borzenek. So maybe Travis is thinking we can't beat them on the inside. We're going to kind of come attack it from the outside, which is fine when you're hitting your shots. They're not hitting their shots at all so far. 4.53 left here in this first quarter. Nine to nothing. Hemlock, they have the ball. Pass over in the corner. Shot put up by Watson. Misses short. Rebound comes away. Oh, Hart has it knocked away. Chloe Coker had it, but had it knocked away by uh, Borzenek. Yeah, kind of came in behind her and just done. And stolen away by Hart. Here we go. And this is uh, Abby Hicks. Abby Hicks coming back. Getting back on her is Watson. Watson gets a hand in the passing lane. Saves it, but she saves it right to Coker. Coker to Hovey. A three. In and out. No. Rebound. Abby Hicks for Hart has it. Hicks with a great offensive rebound. In the paint. Almost tied up. Then he has a presence of mind. Oh, loses it. Tried to get it to Coker. And back comes Hemlock. Well, I tell you, that was their Hart's best chance to get on the board right there. They just did not quite happen. Kylie Miller with it, corner right side, high post right side, gets it back to Borzenik. That's Hannah Borzenik down in the corner. They finally work it down to Lauren Borzenik, and there's going to be a foul called on Hart. I think like. it's going to go on Hovey over the back. It is going to be on Hovey. Hovey was defending her from behind. I thought she was okay, but wasn't. Hovey's going to pick up the foul. Her first, team second. Nine to nothing here. 403 left to go first quarter, John. And uh, Hart needs another stop and a bucket. They have got to get off the. They got to get off this zero here. They really do. Watson with it. She's going to drive all the way around. One hand scoops, misses. Rebound tip comes away to Hart. That's uh, Hicks. Hicks, yeah. And oh. they're kind of battling with their own teammate. Right down to Hovey. She's going to drive. She tries to post up. Now she kicks it back. Oh, intercepted by Finkbeiner. Finkbeiner just getting in a pass. All late. the way back down. Shoots and scores, and it is now 11 to nothing for Hemlock with 3:40 left in the first quarter. And Finkbeiner, they go as Finkbeiner goes. That's one of them. I think Watson's the other one. Those right. two. Oh, another, another steal. Another turnover by Borsnick. Now it comes all the way down, and a layup and lay in by Regan Finkbeiner. And man, right now Hem uh, Hemlock just dominating 13 to nothing. They just, Hart just needs to get a bucket just to get settled down. The longer they go, the, go, the more tense they're going to be. Right. Botel tries to fight it underneath. The Copenhaver puts up the shot. She misses underneath, but it comes away to Hart. That's Hicks. Kicks it back to, uh, that wasn't Hicks, though. That was um, Van Ackmo. Now it's to Hicks. Hicks drives in, and a foul's going to be called on Hemlock. I'm going to 13, fake minor. No, it's not. It's 23, 24. Okay. That would be uh, Hannah Borzenick. Yep. yep. That'll be her first. So it's going to put Abby Hicks at the free throw line. Hicks can uh, knock it down from uh, from the charity stripe. Oh, first she missed that one, yeah, though. It. Boy, oh, boy. Just need to get it, uh, get it done. And they are not doing that right now. Second shot's up and made. She splits the pair. And it's 13 to one, so Hart is on the board with uh, three minutes left here in the first quarter. Social media working already. All right, driving all the way around now to a, man, the lane just opened up and that was Finkbeiner. She's got another one. Yeah, I tell you what, she split a double team, split that and got to the rim in a hurry. She's got six of the 15 for Hemlock. 15 to one with a 238 left. Driving down Abby Hicks all the way through and a, a foul. foul. 
Hemlock wants a travel, but one it's... of the threes, I think. Nope. I'm 0 for 2 tonight. I think that's 12. Curry? Yep, that's yeah, going to be Izzy Curry. 5'9 sophomore. Yeah. It'll be her first team second. On the trigger underneath the basket, Botel gets it out to Hovey. Hovey now pulls it back, drives, shoots, and misses. Oh, man. Boy, missed everything. Yep. I thought maybe it got tipped, but it was wide left. All right, 13. Hearts to, just a little cold. Yeah, 15 to 1. Yeah, Hem we're at 2.30 two left in the first quarter, and they have yet to hit a field goal. Hemlock bringing the ball up. This is Regan Finkbeiner. Finkbeiner between the circles. Going to drive left side. Being watched by Botel. Gets a pass over to Watson. Chloe puts up a three. Misses. Rebound is fought for, and Hart has it. I think that's Copenhaver. That is, and that's another great defensive rebound by her. Long outlet. Gets it to Hicks. Hicks is going to drive. She's boxed in. Kicks it back to Hovey. She shoots, and it will not fall in. But this is Copenhaver. Look at her battle. And it's on the floor. And a tie-up. Boy, nice the sophomore, Kelsey Jeez. Copenhaver, just uh, playing her heart out out there. She is battling in the low post, and you need those girls. Van Akmal's going to leave. Coming in for her is number 11. This is another sophomore, Breslin Porter. Hey, they named the place after her. There we go. Oh, the ball's tipped, and it is. Oh, Van Akmal was, or I'm sorry, Aspen uh, Botel was trying to save it. It goes out of bounds, but uh, it was touched last by uh, Hemlock, so they will have it. Hart will in the front court. 15 to 1 is the score. It's all been Hemlock so far. Gets it to Copenhaver up top. Good inbound pass. Back to Hicks. We're down to 154 left. Hicks now being two tied. Boy, great defense by yeah, Hemlock. They pass. really defend well. Underneath to Hovey. She loses a ball, and back comes Hemlock. Yet and another turnover here by the Hart Pirates. Avery Hall into the game. Leaves it for number 13. That is Finkbeiner. Hemlock just defending so hard. Finkbeiner right side, feeds it down to Borzenek. She goes up strong, scores, count it, she's fouled. That was um, Lauren Borzenek. You're six foot or six foot plus. You can go right and you can go left. That time she caught it on the right side of the lane, went all the way through the paint, up and in with a finish with the left hand. That was beautiful. It really was. And now... Borzenick, or I'm sorry, yeah, that, I yep. was right the first time. It is Borzenick at the free throw line, right? Yes, Lauren, yep. 33, yep. And she knocks it down. She's 17 to, yep, 17 to 1. Full Pro court press. Pass down to Hicks. Hicks now trying to, she's going to dribble through the traffic, then passes up to Botel. Nice job. Ooh, Botel goes down. There's going to be a foul called yep. on uh, 13. That'll be Finkbeiner. I'm going to go with, it is good job. Uh, you know what? That'll be her first. One of the thousand-point yep. girls. Yeah. The, he didn't want to make that call. He had to because she went down. Right. That's just one of those incidental contact. But when they go down, you have no choice. 117 left. It's been all hemlock 18 to 1. Over in the corner now. This is uh, Porter with it. Gets it back over. Underhand scoop shot by uh, Aspen Botel. Miss Copenhaven bad, battling for the rebound. Copenhaver. That girl battles. She does. And do you look at her shooting down or near the tallest girl out there? No. She battles. And it's going to be Hart's ball. It'll be Aspen Botel on the trigger underneath the basket. 104 left first quarter. 18 to 1. Hemlock with the lead here in this Division Three semifinal matchup. The winner will play Blissfield on Saturday at 4 o'clock. Here, right back here. Botel. Yes. Triggers to Copenhaver. Back to Botel. She's going to try a three from the right corner. Nope, that one will not fall. And it goes off of uh, Hemlock, so Hart will stay in possession. Porter there doing a nice job of the defensive rebound. She took uh, Hannah all the way out, almost all the way out of the paint. She was boxing out so hard. Botel tries to get to Hubby. Back to Botel and off of uh, Botel's hands out of bounds, and it's going to be a turnover to, to uh, Hemlock. 18 to 1 to score, under a minute left here in this first quarter. And no field goals. Yeah. That it's is amazing. Good thing I didn't bet on that. Not that I'm a betting man anyway. Right. That's my job. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, Forsnick is going to be on the trigger. Gets it out to uh, Finkbeiner. Finkbeiner across the line now, leaves it for Watson. Chloe Watson, the other half of the 1,000 point brigade for mm -hmm. Finkbeiner and Watson. Playing at the same time. 
stopping. They're going for the last shot. Looks like they're yeah, taking some they're time down to yep. 40 seconds. This is uh, leaving it now for number 13, Finkbeiner. Finkbeiner just holding it. Finkbeiner's Hart athletic. Yeah. She's strong, now, physically strong. Botel comes out to force some movement and they get it pass over to Watson. Watson being watched by Miller. Miller and Watson going at it. We're down to 22 seconds left. Sounds like a law firm. Yeah. Finkbeiner now up top. 18 to one is the score. It's been Hemlock all the way. With the ball now is Finkbeiner, and they are taking it down to the last shot, or at least working on that. Oh, that was tight. Botel's going to get a foul. Oh, that's her second, that's isn't her it? That's her second, yeah. Boy. Oh, I got him for three team fouls, so. So that's going to put uh, Borzenik on the trigger. That'll be Hannah. And she gets it into uh, number 13, Finkbeiner. We're down to five, down to four. Three, drives right side, kicks it in the corner. Watson shoots and scores, man. I guess it's only fitting you hit a shot at the buzzer, a three-pointer, 21 to one to put the exclamation point on a dom dominating first quarter by the uh, Hemlock Huskies. Dominating is in all capital letters. That is a performance for the ages there that first quarter by Hemlock. They are doing everything right. The four players in the scoring column already. Watson has got, she's got eight. Finkbeiner's got six. Hannah Borznik's got five. No, that's Lauren Borznik's got five. Dominating performance here by Hemlock. Three more to go, though. Yeah. It's, uh, and uh, Hart is not accustomed to playing this far down. They were able to kind of stop the hemorrhaging against uh, against uh, the uh, their team uh, Buchanan on, uh, in the quarterfinal game, but now they now you got to you just can't get on by the score. You yeah. just got to come back, put some possessions together, make a few stops here and there, and just kind of crawl your way in. Like you said, you got three quarters, but boy, you can't you can't have too many quarters <laughs> like no. this one. No, and I think Travis is going to tell them. There's no 20 point shot, right, right? Right. So let's work on going in a halftime down 10. Yeah. Just start chipping that away. And you know what? If you just start, if you chip it away down to 10 by half, chip it away down to five by the end of the third, and then you're right there by the by the end of the fourth. This will not be 84 to four when we're done. Right. You know that. Right. Kudos to Hemlock putting up 21 points in the first quarter, but they are they play great defense. They're forcing a lot of turnovers. They're limiting pretty much Hart to one shot, and Hart is not shooting the ball well. I want to thank our sponsors. Do kind of a group hook here a little bit. North Grove Brewers, Van Dyke Mortgage, Foundation Systems of Michigan, uh, Durga Insurance Group, Green Ridge Realty, Chris Dykema and Sarah Rio, Big Stone Therapies, Grieve Law, Shied Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, and uh, Cobo Banker Dave Dusenberry. Thank those folks for being with us. All season long, we really appreciate uh, what they do for us and helping us bring you, helping us make trips like this to the Breslin Center for our teams. Absolutely. I, I've already heard from the Dues, Dave Dues. And All right. Yep, already Dave heard has from checked him. in. Heard from the Millers, Les Gowell. All right. Got well, it going on. Hey, we're hoping for better news, yeah, folks. Keep Bear with us. We're hoping yeah. that uh, Hart can get this thing turned around a little bit. Baby steps, I guess, right now, yes. right? Whatever it takes. All right. It's going to be... Um, Hem Hemlock with the ball first. Bringing it up court now is Kylie Miller. Kylie's going to drive right side, being watched by Botel. Botel with two fouls. Gets it back up top. Shot, three-pointer put up. It's going to be missed. That was by Victoria Hoffey, who uh, comes Good. in and can shoot 41% from the three-point three arc. Ball goes out of bounds. Hicks going almost coast-to-coast coast 90 feet. Lost the handle on it, but fortunately for her, a Hemlock player touched it last. So you're going to have Aspen Botel on the trigger right underneath the basket. Kicks it out to Hovey, back to Botel. Botel right in front of us, tries, puts up the shot, and in and out, back in. Finally, the first field goal for uh, Hart comes in the second quarter. That was about the 7.35 mark. Driving down now is Miller. Ball knocked away, but right there to pick it up is Dearman for right. Hemlock. Now the Pirates got to work on getting stops and shots. Right, stops and shots. Driving right side now is Watson goes up strong misses got this got the uh, miss. Hovey with a nice defensive rebound really had to work down there to get that. Uh, Hovey threw it away. She threw it back behind the Hicks. Hicks is already breaking across the line. That's something they have to do. They are 
Uh, probably 10-3 on points. You got three points, they probably got, I don't know, seven, maybe upwards of 10 turnovers already. You just cannot turn the ball over. Especially when you get to a semifinal game, you might be able to do nine. that against some teams. Yeah, they got nine turnovers. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? All right, this is he uh, Hemlock with the ball. This their, is Watson. Their field goal percentage heart is at 10%. Up top now to Borzenek. That's going to be Lauren Borzenek. Look at the big girl out yeah. front dribbling the ball. Passes down, knocked away there nicely by uh, Chloe Coker, and we're going to have a – are they going to call a foul? She's, no, she stepped on the end uh, uh, sideline. So, yeah. They, they forced Hicks to the sideline. Yep. She stepped on the sideline. Ah. Boy, just – they almost get what they want, don't they, yeah. Cal? Almost, they get the stop. John, you're shooting 10% from the field and you have 10 free throws. There's no way that is a recipe for success. Right. Borznik on the trigger, 21-3. It's been all hemlock here in the second quarter, 335 left. Pass up top to Borznik. Borznik leaves it now for her sister. And now drives it around right side to Miller. Miller, little hook pass back in to Lauren Borznick. Puts it up, misses a shot, but draws a foul. I think it's on Hovey. Nope, they're going to call it on Coker, it looks like. Her first. That would be the team fourth foul. I'm sorry, the fifth foul. Shot put up and missed. That foul was on Coker? Yes, it was. Thank you. Borznik, uh, Lauren Borznik at the free throw line, 6'2", junior. Dave Dusenberry says hello, John. Hey, hey David. Ah, uh, so 33's on the line. 624 left, it's 21 to three, make it two, oh, in and out, no. And again, Hart uh, has a stop, you could say. Whoa, there's some contact, no call. Hovey driving it through traffic all the way down. Passes over to Botel. Botel's going to drive baseline, pulls up, shoots, and misses. Rebound falls in the hands of Lauren Borznick. Boy, the last one she shot from there was a little bit short. Puts a little bit more on at that time, but it's a little bit long. Oh, Hemlock's going to go wide open over here on the right side. This that is ball, the ball's going to go to her. You watch. Finkbinder's going to take the shot, though. Misses it. Rebound comes back to Abby Hicks. She lost her footing. So Hart is getting the stops. They just are not able to convert the other way, and that one does not go down. And Hicks kind of hits the bottom of the rim. Back quickly comes Miller over in the corner. Finkbinder three misses. Rebound is going to go. It's been saved, but it's saved back to Hart. Here comes Hicks. Hicks one on one drives, puts it up, and misses. Oh my goodness. That's two layups in a row that Hicks has missed. And Hicks, and Hicks is tired. And back comes Hemlock, a three, and he, she misses. So Hemlock is missing. They're doing part of it. Yeah. Just Hart but, is not filling it no. up on the other end. Here comes Hovey. Hovey's going to dribble through traffic, loses a ball, and is taken away by Hemlock. Turnover now at number 11 for Hart. Here comes um, Finkbeiner. Across the line, we're down to five minutes left. 21-3, Hemlock. Second quarter. Big Biner up top. Nice Passes. pick. Sorry, nice pick set out front. Gets it over here. Up top now to Lauren Borzenick. Lauren's going to drive against Hovey. Puts up the shot and misses. Another rebound by, uh, by Coker. Coker doing a nice job. Left-handed layup maybe. To Hicks. Shoots and they cannot score a bucket. Oh, Three my goodness. Layups. Three opportunities here by Hart. Oh, I mean, Three you've had, missed layups. You've had, what, five or six transitions yeah. and another shot and a miss and a put back and a score finally. But you've had six transitions down where where Hemlock did not score. Yeah, that was your right. opportunity that was to come your back. Yeah. Ah, 23 to three yeah. now. And now we're gonna have, I believe, a reach-in foul on Hemlock. After those three missed layups, John, 7.1% from the field. 7.1. Mm. The foul is going to be on number one. That will be Miller for um, Kylie Miller for uh, Hem Hemlock. That is going to be their fifth team foul. Hart has, I'm sorry, yeah, fifth team foul. Hart has five as well. Aspen Botel triggers across to, Coker, or to uh, Copenhaver. Copenhaver down 
right side now to uh, number 11. That is going to be um, Porter, who's boxed in over there. Leaves it for Van Ockno. Back to Porter. Drives in off the glass. Shoot, scores! Good job by Porter to get to the rim and knocks it down. There's a, there's a made layup. Never been so happy to see five points in my yeah, life. Right. <laughs> All right. We're down to 345 left. Cross court pass over right side, driving in. Hemlock's number three. That is going to be a haul, and she misses. And back comes Hart. And, and you were right a minute ago. Hemlock just continues now to miss. Right. But Hart can't do anything about it. Underhand by Botel misses. Put back by Hovey, and Hovey scores. Well, maybe that'll get her going. So 23 to 7 now. Yeah, now you got a little bit of a 4 0, 4 -0 run going here. 321 left here in this first half. Hemlock with the ball. This is Finkbeiner. Remember Holding what I it? said, just beat, sorry, just beat down 10 at the half. Right. And that would be an accomplishment. Yes. Finkbeiner now gets it back to Borzenek. Feeds it underneath to her sister. Lauren goes up strong and scores. So tough to defend her. Yeah. So good in the low post. You know, you got to give credit where credit's due. And these two girls in the low post can finish. Another turnover by Hart. Yeah, back quickly comes uh, Finkbeiner. Finkbeiner pulls up at the free throw line, shoots and misses. Rebound falls into the hands of Porter. And back comes Hart. They have a two on four. This is Copenhaver. Ball gets away from her, but she clamps it down, gets it to uh, Botel. Botel now back to Hubby. Hubby drives in, underhand scoop. Oh, misses it. Did everything but go down the cylinder. That's, what, probably six miss layup? Yep, Borzenik comes back, shoots and misses. Wow. What's it? Man, layups. Nobody can hit them. Here comes Hart, and the ball poked out from behind, stolen away again by Hemlock with 2.14 yep. left. Hart was not aware that they had a Hemlock girl coming up behind her, punched it up forward, and another turnover here by the Hart Pirates. Well, not to and be the pace is slowing down yeah. considerably. Well, the Hemlock coach is saying, hey, we're not hitting it anyhow. Let's at least work on the clock a little bit. Yeah. After they couldn't miss in no. the first quarter. Pass underneath now. This is Borznik going up strong. Hannah turns, fires, misses. Rebound. Porter again cleaning the glass. She's doing a great job yeah, coming off the is. bench. And you, you know, you need, you need everybody to start stepping up. This is Botel across the line. Botel wheels it over here left side. Gets it down to Van Ockmo. Nice Mariana pick. Gets it back up top to Porter. Porter's going to drive right side and puts it up and goes down. Misses a shot. Ball goes out of bounds and it'll be Hart's ball. <laughs> Hannah Borznik had it that slipped through her fingers off her foot and just went out of bounds. And, oh, timeout. Okay, timeout is being called. I seen it too. I thought he was calling the technical. I did and too. I remember the TV timeout. Yeah. So there is a timeout uh, with 126 left here in the first half, 25 to 7. You have Hemlock with the lead. And uh, Cal talked about it before. Uh, we said that at, at the end of the first quarter is all you really need, like all you really need, is to have Hemlock come down and not convert. And yeah. boy, there was like six or maybe even, uh, probably not seven, but I, I'm thinking five or six times, six trips down that they did not score. Hart has the ball and just cannot convert on the other end. Yeah. If they convert on the other end, I know ifs and buts, right? Yeah. But if they do that, they're right back in this game. They are, and they're layups. They were missing right. layups, that's the problem. Hemlock shooting 40.7% for field goals. Hart has doubled up where they were pretty much. They were at 7.1, now at 15.8. So. That number's trending up, but it needs to be trending a whole lot further up than 15.8. 13 turnovers here yeah. for Hart so, so far in about almost two quarters. Hemlock's got five, so almost double right. the turnovers. And you got to credit Hemlock, they're defending like crazy. I know I'm exaggerating a little bit, but they probably haven't had 13 their turnovers in a season. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's – well, they're still in this one, Cal. 25, 27, they – you know, um, Hemlock has proven that they can miss now. Yeah. Now Hart has got to just be able to hone in on the uh, hone in on the basket. They're going to have the ball in the front court with 126 left, trailing 25 to seven. Hubby has it, drives in the paint, spin move, shoots and misses. Rebound Great. falls in the hands of Borzenik. Exactly everything you wanted, right. with the exception of the make. Exactly. Beautiful spin move by Hovey, finished with the left hand and misses a layup. Watson drives in one hand, she misses, and this is a... We have a foul, it's gonna go on uh, Lauren uh, uh, Borsnick. Okay. That should be her second. So another miss for uh, Hemlock. So Hart is getting the misses, they just cannot convert on the other end. 
Then still four court press here by Hemlock. Going to be Abby Hicks, 90 feet away, 109 left here in this first half. Hicks bounce pass and is stolen away. Oh, by this is going to be Finkbeiner, a three, and she scores. Well, you're not going to hold a team down forever. And now it's 28 to seven with 59 seconds left. You know, that's a 5-0 or 6-0 run right there. Right. And we have a jump ball as Hemlock almost forces another turnover, and they do because Hemlock's going to have the ball. So they had just a previous 5-0 run, right? right? Because turnover, you don't get it. You turn it over, they hit a three. To two, you don't get. And now, oh, no, I take it back. It is going to be hard. Yeah, five-second count on, but uh, Hicks does get it in. This is Copenhaver, and it goes off her knee. And now we have Porter tying up um, tying up uh, number 21, uh, and, Hoffy. And it's going to be a foul, John, on Porter. It'll be her first timeout trying to figure out how many. I think it's six. What you looking for, fouls? Yeah, six each, That's going right? to be, uh, no, si yeah, six each, you're yep. right. There's so many numbers to look at here that you get. Yeah. You get number Four. overkill. Here <laughs> we we. We, we rely on my little notepad, and right. then we get here, and it's like a plethora of stats. Almost too much. Pass back now. We're down to 34 seconds left. This is Finkbeiner leaving it for Hall. Hall drives around, loses it, but then uh, Hem and they get it back. Yeah, it goes right back to Hemlock. Down to 25 seconds. This is Finkbeiner with it, dribbling between the legs back up top. 20, 19 seconds over to Borsnick. Borsnick's just going to hold it until somebody comes out. And they do. Over to Watson. Chloe Watson leaves it to Finkbeiner down to 10 seconds. Playing for that final shot. And now down to four seconds, down to three, down to two. Finkbeiner, will she take it? And she does. And she misses fouled. The shot. She was fouled. There was no doubt she was fouled. Oh my gosh. Yeah, They're she was. Call a she foul was. Right at the end. Oh, that is, that's not what Hart needed. That's going to be on Aspen Botel, her third. So Aspen Botel gets a third foul as time is running yeah. out. Oh, man, that's about as bad as it gets for you right there. Time is running out in the first half. And Finkbinder prove, proves to be mortal if yeah. she misses a free throw. And the second one is made. So halftime, 29 to seven for uh, Hemlock. You know, it was 21 to five at the end of the first quarter, John. Right. And I said, you know, get it back to 10, not thinking that they were only gonna score two points in the second quarter. Right. Wow, this is just, um, I'm shocked, as I'm sure the entire Hart community is also shocked. Yeah, they're playing against a very good team, but yeah, to be down 20, uh, 29 to a seven. Got Joe Tannis here. We're gonna get him uh, hooked up for sound and we'll let uh, Cal uh, figure out uh, the stats for us. Unfortunately, there's not gonna be a whole lot of stats for uh, Hart. Joe, football coach over there, also assistant boys basketball coach. Been a fantastic year for Hart. Little, to say the least, a little rough, uh, rough sailing here in this first half for the girls though, isn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a tough start for them, but this is a gritty team, and, you know, I think what makes Hart special is we don't define our success based on everybody else and what they think, and wins and losses isn't everything. So, you know, whether they win or lose today, yes. you know, we've had a great year, and I think that perspective is kind of what separates us from everybody else. You really do, and I know the, the motto is, doesn't matter, get better. Uh, Coach, uh, Coach Rosema has preached that, meaning I think the translation there is haven't gotten a lot of respect. Um, you know, you play the number one team, uh, in the uh, the state in the quarterfinals, and uh, everybody's thinking, "Well, wow, boy, poor Hart, they're going to come here and just get laid out." And these girls, they just they just don't know that they're supposed to get beat. I guess, for lack of a better word, they just play it out. Don't I? Mean, like I said, they're having a rough time here, but I'm not going to count them out. 29 to seven. Yeah, they no. get they get Hemlock to miss a few. For, uh, fortunately, they did get Hemlock to miss a few. They just couldn't convert on the other end. Yeah, yeah. There's you know we've had our opportunities at times. Uh, they they jumped out to that big start. Kind of everything went their way early on. Right. But you know we can definitely play with them. Um, they are they are not leaps and bounds ahead of us. So you know we got an opportunity in the second half to come out and really show what we've got. So I'm excited to see how they come out in the second half and respond. Let's talk a little bit about the culture over in Hart. You're a relative newcomer. Been there a couple of years. Came over to Hart. Um, got that football program uh, going again. Six wins, and I feel so bad for you because for years 
what was it, the saying, six wins and you're in? Well, go figure. This is the year that everything's point-based, and Hart gets their six wins, but not enough points to get into the playoffs. But that certainly does not diminish the work that you've done over there building that out. First of all, let's start out there. And, and you've, you had some injuries over there, too. You had your big horse, um, uh, um, Ande Verde, go out. And I'll tell you how dominant he was. I think he went out game two or three of the season, yep. something like that. Made about two and a half games. And he was leading the league in stats for like a week or so. And he was up in the top five for like four weeks in stats. And he hadn't even played for two. That's how that's how special the year could have been for you, right? Yeah, you know, we had we had a lot of injuries and lost a couple guys for different reasons right at the start of the season. But, um, you know, again, that's kind of what made our, our group so special. And that's kind of what made that year so special. Um, other guys had to step up and we had to figure stuff out and we had to come together. Um, and it's their team and their program and we worked together and we figured stuff out. It wasn't as pretty as we wanted. Right. Uh, there were some games where we struggled more than we would like to, but you know we were finding our identity, and uh, you know we're we're really excited coming into this year because we return a lot. Yes. Um, and we we get quite a bit more speed and skill on the field this year, so uh, we we feel like we're going to be much more explosive this year, and we're going to be much more advanced in what we're able to do. We're talking with Joe Tannis, varsity a football coach and also assistant coach of the boys uh, basketball program over there. Before we kind of hone in on the basketball end of things here too, just want to talk about you coming over and the culture over in Hart right now. Though when you took the job. I mean, the expectations maybe weren't that high because they're just, I mean, it was, you're going into the West Michigan Conference, but they were going to be this two-tier level. Uh, so a lot, of, a lot of moving parts with this. What was your, your thought when you went there? And, uh, and did you see that there could be a, a pretty quick turnaround for you? Or what, I mean, or are you even kind of surprised uh, with, with how, it's, how the culture has kind of turned in a relatively short time? Yeah, you know, I I'm not really that surprised, to be honest with you. When I got there, there was just good people in all the right spots. Right. Um, you know, and in all of our sports programs, we have great leadership. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a reflection of the guys we work for with our AD, Tim Hertzler. Um, you know, he just brings that good, healthy perspective of, you know, we're going to work hard, but, you know, Again, results aren't everything. We're trying to build better people, and if we do that, the byproduct will be the success. So sure. there, there's not that pressure, you know. Um, all the pressure that I'm going to feel for the most part is always going to be self-induced, and that's always going to be the worst. So, you know, we always want to be a little bit better and a little bit farther along than we are um, as coaches. But um, overall, you know, there's just so many key people. Our principal, Troy Moran, we stole him from Montague. Uh, what a, you know, a blessing right. for us. I mean, that guy's phenomenal, and, you know, we got out of school early today, had 80 kids on two spectator buses, uh, got a chance to ride that down again. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And then our superintendent, you know, making that decision to make it a half day for us today. Wow. You know, and he's willing to take the arrows and do some of the stuff that other people aren't willing to do in those leadership roles. Sure. He's not trying to protect his job. He's trying to do what he thinks is best and right. rule through common sense. And they understand that sports are – uh, integral part of the high school experience and bringing a community together. It's more than just academics. We're trying to develop well-rounded people and uh, make some proud alumni and, uh, you know, just a great environment. So they've done that. Uh, the boys' side of things for basketball, again, you were helping out with uh, Coach Doan over there and Coach Bronzema. Uh, he's uh, kind of a newcomer, so he walks into a new situation after coming over. You know, we talk about hard luck stories over at Orchard View. Has that great team. COVID shuts him down. So you, you never know how good that team was going to be. And I remember uh, Facebooking him and messaging him and just giving him as much support as I can, saying, hey, hey, brother, hang in there. I know it's, uh, you know, things happen for a reason. We don't always know why sometimes. But then he finds up uh, – landing in, in heart and boy what a magical year the boys have had uh, what their first uh, first conference title in like 60 years yep. uh, first uh, first di district title in uh, a number of just, years we lost in the district championship yeah you know, we just yeah. happened to be on the wrong side this year we yeah, went I'm to sorry. d2 yeah, but, yeah, yeah my bad but cadillac my bad. no you're good cadillac's still rolling and, you yeah, know yeah. we felt if we would have fell into d3 like our girls we we think right. we'd still be playing right now yeah. got you know got confused with the girls i was thinking yep. about them on the district title <laughs> but uh yeah exactly um but you're you're absolutely right but what a year that has been and uh i uh we at catchmark we were able to get some scenes in the locker room you folks were gracious to let us in there but just to kind of see that brotherhood that was going on in that boys locker room I know you know that from and you staying with the with the guys during the basketball season too that's important as well I mean you're you know you're obviously you got your your, your football program going but but to your point of everybody's in the same boat here you just 
that's kind of the buy-in, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. You know, our, our basketball coach, Coach Bronsma, I worked with him for one year at Orchard View, and then, you know, we worked together. He was right. head coach there, and same with Coach Dome. But, you know, he's just a great leader. Um, it's, it's all about the kids, and it's all about their program. Sure. And he leads with humility right. um, and vulnerability, and I think that connects people. And he does a great job of connecting people, and he does a great job of allowing people to bring out the best in themselves. Right. And, you know, I think our team played pretty loose and, and pretty collective. Um, we got a great connectedness in our program and uh, in our in our building, in our culture, in our school. So, right. you know, I think close groups, tight groups, um, you feel the love, you feel the connection, you're willing to play a little bit harder for people yeah. and go that extra mile. And I think that's kind of what he does really special. Want to say kudos to the cross-country teams over there, both the boys and the girls. Phenomenal. Just a fine tradition over there that, that you walked in. So that adds to the to the culture. And uh, the girls' side of things here, let's uh, kind of focus on them a little bit as you kind of watch this from uh, a little bit more afar. But, uh, boy, what a year they had. Uh, perfect year in the, the conference and just some, some great runs. And we kind of touched on it before. Maybe not a lot of respect, kind of the Rodney Dangerfield maybe of girls basketball yeah. in a lot of ways. But they don't seem to, you know, I, I watched them here and you can see when, when, when teams usually get here for the first time, the, the mouth is open and the eyes are big, but didn't really see that. And, you know, you see that these girls just kind of, they just kind of live for the moment, don't they? Yeah, you know, Coach Rosma, again, has done a great job. He's built that thing uh, the right way. Um, there, there's so many people pulling together, the, the youth coaches in the area that are taking kids on AAU, yeah. you know, to go play and kind of that stuff. That's usually harder for a rural town because we're farther away than <laughs> yeah. people. So we've got a lot of the things in place that are people come together that are helping hands to make this thing move in the right direction. But Coach Rosma has obviously done a great job. These girls are so much fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, have a bunch of them in our weight training class. Um, you know, Kelsey Copenhaver. Yeah. You know, every time she gets a rebound, I'm screaming weight room. Um, <laughs> and, and Addie Hovey, like, yeah. you're seeing the difference. Yeah. And uh, we're adding more weight training classes. We're doing all the stuff that it takes to, to be a small school. We want to be a small school power and yeah. do stuff the right way. And I, I think we're headed in that direction. Final question. I'll let you get, uh, get back. Um, talk about that. You've been associated with, with bigger schools a lot, uh, not only playing-wise, but also coaching-wise. You come to a smaller school. And we've been kind of a part of that, too, and just watching for years. We did a lot of West Michigan Conference, so we're kind of used to that, uh, the Ravanas of the world. And, boy, that you guys are your community's pro team, for lack of a better word. And how was that adjustment for you? I mean, that, that's got to be a warm feeling to just see the community buy-in. Is I mean, they had the – from from Shelby, the girls had that uh, had that caravan of law enforcement taking it back into yeah. town. And, I mean, just that's that's just what, what, what Americana is all about, isn't it? To me, it's, it's all the things right with America. It's, yeah. you know, a community coming together. Um, it, it's very old school in a lot of ways. You know, it's not a lot of red tape. Right. Uh, we rule with common sense um, and good intentions. And, uh, you know, one of our things is assume best intentions of others. And uh, that's Mr. Moran. And I think, again, that stuff just goes a long way. You know, my kids run free. They have free access all over the school. My wife works in the school. Yeah. Um, you know, half the people are raising my kids half the time. So, well, you, you know, almost, we're just you almost live on school property, don't I, you? I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. He the literally, like to buy that at he some literally point. gets his mail and the school. <laughs> School property. Yes. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, Joe. It's so great to see you doing what you're doing over there. Keep it going. Hart's been a great story. We're looking for a good half here, and uh, best of luck to you guys. Okay. I, I appreciate it, John. All right, Cal. Thanks for allowing me to have your headset. <laughs> <laughs> you guys do a great job, oh. and we appreciate everything oh. you do. You guys make the West Michigan Conference feel like a big time program and very elite. So oh. thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. Kind words. We do appreciate that. We appreciate that a lot. And uh, we Hi. are back here for the second half. Guess we took that over for for pretty much the second half here, Calvin. You're, that's awesome. Uh, no, that's that's. I, get, uh, I tell you, man, I was I spent the first five minutes on social media. It was did awesome. You? We get a lot of messages. Yeah, but we're gonna do a little shout out here in a minute when we get All a right. chance. Hemlock has the ball to start the second half. They lead 29 to seven. This is Miller coming back, getting it over to Borzenek. Uh, Hannah down to her sister Lauren. Lauren drives in one hand scoop scores. So right Hemlock, where they left off. Yeah, I was just going to say that. 31-7 to seven with 7.42 left. Just can't handle the big girls in the, in the paint. There's two of them. Pressure defense broken. A nice pass to Hovey in the front court to Coker. Coker drives in, puts up, and scores. So Hart at least has scored quicker in the second half than he did the first half, 31-9. to nine. Yeah, when you only have seven points in the whole half, that's just a recipe for disaster. This is Miller passing over to Hannah Borsnick. Down to her sister, Lauren. Lauren. Oh, has it stolen away. Here we go. This there is Coker go. with it. That's where it starts. It's got to start somewhere. Coker leaves it for Hicks. 
cross court pass over to Hovey. Hovey, baseball pass to Coker. She shoots. Oh, that one would have been nice. It would have been a three, but it just rims off. Yeah, she had a wide open look from the right side. Great, uh, great shot opportunity. Chloe Watson pulls it back now. 6.55, third quarter, 31 9. Hemlock with the lead. Hardest brung their shooting percentage up to 19%. They were down to 7.1 at mm. one part in the second quarter here. Pass over to Watson, a three try, no long rebound comes out to Aspen Botel. She's got three fouls and she brings it up court. She drives in, back door, shoots, oh, missed the shot. Did everything but score. How many layups does oh, Hart miss? Too many. Oh, ball intercepted by Hovey. Hovey comes back. So they got the defensive thing going here, Cal. Yes. This is Hicks, drives in, rocker steps, she misses. Rebound, though, by Hovey. Hovey is going to try to box him. There's going to be a foul called. It's either on Borsnick or uh, Watson. They were both down there. I'm going to go with Borsnick, I think. Watson, good call. Yeah. So, so we want to welcome in. Watch this. i got to pull this back up here a second. Okay. want to welcome in Jason Roberts and the entire crew at Keen Lumber. All right. So appreciate thank everybody you very at, much. You at Keen Lumber listening this afternoon. Jason Robbins, thank you so much for the message. Known appreciate him. that. And uh, he says they're pulling for a big second half for there the Pirates. You go. Fingers crossed, Jason, right? Shot put up and made by Hovey. So she splits the pair. It's now 31 to 10 with 618 left. Yeah, I've known Jason for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Did a great job over in Holton as a coach. Pass over left side now to this is Watson for Hemlock. Dishes, <clears throat> excuse me, back over to Finkbinder. Feeds it down to uh, Borsnick, and uh, that is Lauren Borsnick. Bangs it home, 33-10. She's got 13. Beautiful entry pass to her. I mean, just stunning entry pass. Pass to Hicks. Hicks drives. Oh, why'd she stop? Boxed out there. Gets it back over to Van Ackmel. Mariano with a spin move. Sp oh, That's a travel. Yeah, there's, yeah. Yeah, there's a few too many steps there. She well, it was a beautiful go. spin move, <laughs> yeah, and then was. she stops, and yeah. everything was perfect, and yeah. then she went. Right. Well, then I she think said. I'm in the NBA, <laughs> yeah. and they're going to give me an extra one or two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, no, in the NBA, you can get away with that, but right. not here. 535 left. Here comes Miller. Leaves it for Borsnick. Borsnick leaves it now for um, Finkbeiner. Finkbeiner down in the corner to Watson. Left alone for a three. That's dangerous. Misses, but it falls in the hands of Hovey. Hovey comes back, doesn't have the numbers, taking it all the way down, underhand scoop, ball. Oh, she's going to be she fouled. fouled. Boy, that could have been a three-point play if that would have went yeah. down. I think that's Finkbeiner. If it is her, it's her second. Going to put Hovey on the line. I have her as uh, one for two. You know, they haven't called who that is on. You think it's Finkbeiner? I thought it was, yeah. Shot put up and made by Hovey. So she nails that one. 33 to 11 is the score. Hemlock on top, 518 left. Winner will play Blissfield on Saturday, right back here at 4 p.m. Well, Finkbeiner was guarding her. Shot missed. Rebound. That's Hovey battling for it, and it's taken away by uh, Borsnick. No, that's Van, Van Ackmel battling for it. Or was it about, yeah. Okay, Van Ackmel. <laughs> Should have known that. <coughs> this it's is, easy to do. They're one number off, 23 right. and 24. Pass underneath now to Borsnick. Borsnick. Gets it, gets it back over to Miller, shoots, she misses, rebound. Hovey has it for Hart. Hovey doing a nice job getting that defensive rebound. Oh, just about lost the handle on it. Gets it in the corner, Botel tries a three. Yeah, she nails it. Boy, we haven't said that enough. 33-14, 446 left. Botel now has five. Here comes Miller bringing it up court, 440 left third quarter. Hart trying to crawl their way back into this one. Needs some stops and needs some scoring. Outside from that. Don't need a whole lot. Shot put up by Miller. Oh, she drains a three. That's a killer. 36-14 before yeah, 26 you, left. At this stage of the game, you can't go three for three. Van Ackmel now across the line. She's going to drive. And it's gonna be, from behind, yep. both, and a turnover. Borsnick has it now. Gets it over to Miller. I think that's 17 turnovers for them. Drive down now, back over to Borsnick. This is... Um, Hannah getting it to Miller. Miller pulls it back. Van Ackmel watching her. Crossover dribble. And a knocked away by Coker, but getting it back as Miller shoots. She misses. Rebound. Tipped. Oh, it came off of Hovey. Comes back to Watson. She misses again. And now Hovey has it. So many opportunities. Boy, Hart's got to score here. This is Botel coming down to get and misses a shot. I think uh, got, got a piece of it. They're going to have a jump ball. It's going to be Hart ball. 
So Hart will have it in the front court. 3.41 left third quarter, 36-14. Um, Hemlock's in the lead. And we got a timeout called on the floor. That's gonna be a timeout called by Hart. So we have, what, 3.41 left here in this first, um, first, listen to me, third uh, quarter uh, with a score 36 to 14. Again, we'll go uh, blow through our sponsors here again. They've been uh, so, so good to us. Couldn't be here without them. North Grove Brewers, Van Dyke Mortgage, Foundation Systems of Michigan, Durga Insurance Group, Green Ridge Realty, Chris Dykema, Sarah Real, Big Stone Therapies, Grieve Law of North Muskegon, Shide Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, and Dave Dusenberry, Coldwell Banker. And okay. Want to thank the folks at Keen yep. Lumber for listening in here as well. Caught up. Look at so, that. Timeouts. I like timeouts. Yeah. I can get caught up on stuff. Well, what are you thinking there, Coach Cal? Put your coaching cap on. And kind of what we said, you got to have, a, you know, Hemlock to a certain point is is, uh, is cooperating with some misses from now uh, every now and then. Are you down, what, 24? No, 22? Yeah, 22. The problem is you're down 22, and through almost two and a half quarters, you've only been, a been able to manage 14 points. So it tells you you're struggling on the offensive end, you're struggling on the defensive end. And Hemlock's played into what you've wanted them to do. They have struggled since right. the end of the first quarter to uh, some of their shots have not fallen. But the problem is, go, oh, and we have a foul on the inbound. The Bot problem is Hart's offense isn't doing anything. Right. Botel got the inbounds pass into Hicks. And Hicks went up for the bucket, missed the shot, but drew the foul. Nice out of bounds play there, dr drawn up by Travis Throsman. And Hicks is one and two from the free throw line. I think the foul was on number 11, Watson, her second. All of a sudden, uh, they're not announcing fouls. Shot is missed, 36-14. We miss our old friend, Mr. Forsythe, do we We not? do. Legendary, legendary public address announcer for so many things for the MHSAA. Passed away here a couple of years ago, lived in Traverse City. He had one of those voices that was just incredible. So Hicks splits the pair, and now they dribble down into the front court. Uh, Hem Hemlock does, goes out of bounds, and it'll stay Hemlock's ball. It's going to be uh, Hall, Avery Hall on the trigger. Gets it down to Watson, feeds it down to Lauren Borsnick. Reverse scores. They have no answer for her. No, they really don't. 38-15. Yeah, Hovey was Gardner that time. He just got around Hovey. Now here comes a pass in the front court. Van Achmel has uh, Coker underneath, and Coker, nope, that's not Coker, that's Copenhaver. Copenhaver scores. You got uh, two blondes out yep. there. <laughs> Good <laughs> job by uh, Hart that time because you got a pass to break the press, and that's what they did. 38-17. This is Finkbinder. She's going to try a three and in and out. No rebound, Borsnick. Borsnick's going to go up strong and score. Oh, man, she's Lauren you Borsnick's can't. feeling it now. You can't, you, they can't handle it. This is uh, Van Achmo, passes over to Hovey. Hovey right side, going to drive in, now pulls it back, gets it to Mariana. Mariana leaves it for Aspen Botel. Botel dribbles in, drives, three-pointer, uh, misses a shot, rebound off the ankle, comes away to Hart. That is uh, Van Achmo, puts it back and scores, and now it's 40-19 to 19 with 2.31 left in the third. Her first bucket of the game. Here comes Ham, uh, Hemlock back. Pass up, almost stolen away by Van Achmo. And, and we're going to get a timeout. Timeout called by Hemlock. So they'll take a timeout with 2.22 left third quarter, 40 to 19. Hemlock with the lead here you know, at Lauren, the Breslin Center. I, I'm sorry, Lauren yeah. Borgsnick, to me, is just as impressive as the big girl that we've seen the other night that's going to, that's going to Ohio State. Right. She's yeah. put on a great, she's played a great game here today. Wow. Yeah, she's got 17 points. Uh, you have Finkbeiner with 10 points for um, for Hemlock. Leading the way for Hart. Not been a lot of scoring, but you got uh, Aspen Botel. She's got three fouls, but she's also got five points. And uh, Hovey has four points. Yeah, Hicks after having uh, 18 the other night, she has two. Yeah. You know, Coker's got two. Van sure. has got two. Botel's got, like, you, so she's got five. So you can tell right there that your offense is just struggling. Credit Winter, Hemlock's great defense, yep. too. Winner plays Blissfield Saturday at 4 p.m. This is Hemlock with the ball. Pass down to Watson over here near corner. 
2.18 left, 40 to 19. Then all Hemlock, big lead early. Here comes uh, Wheeler on the right side. Finkbinder drives, puts it up, scores, count it, she's fouled. Copenhaver. She had to come off of her girl and come down on the switch as she came flying down the lane. Just a little bit of body and got her. Finkbinder now, if she hits this free throw, I have her for 13. I think I found the problem. The uh, PA announcer has lost uh, the, the microphone. The microphone is not working. No, They're working okay. on that. So she uh, hits the free throw there, make it 43-19 with 2.06 left. Still four-court press there. This is Hovey. Hovey has a block by Finkbeiner, battling for it again. It's on the floor. Oh, <laughs> Hovey comes away with it. Great hustle. Gets it to Hicks. Hicks crossover dribble, pulls it back to Hovey. Hovey puts it up, misses a shot. Rebound is uh, Borznik. Missed another right-handed layup. Yep. Back comes uh, Watson, corner, three, short, missed. Hovey with a rebound. Another rebound and for Hovey. Hart's tired. Hemlock's beating them down the floor just about every time now. Over to Botel. She's going to let it fly. She's going to miss. Rebound comes out to uh, to Hemlock. That's how you tell when you're tired, John. Your yeah. shots are short. Yeah. 124 left, 43-19. Yeah, I just don't think there's going to be enough gas in the tank here to make up the difference, but we'll see. No, and I'll tell you who's not tired anymore is Hemlock. Right. Because they got the lead, they got the momentum, they got the mocks, and everything's flowing their way. Foul is going to be on number 11. So I would assume that is going to be, is there an 11? Uh, is yeah. Breslin Porter in there? Yep. Yeah, I guess that she Porter's was. A, yep, she's the 11. So she picked up the foul. Yeah, That's, we have three new girls that just checked in here for Hart. Pass over right side to Watson. Watson drives, tries to get it back, and it's stolen away by Coker. Well, wow, she should have just shot it. Gets it up to Hicks. Hicks right wing over to Coker. Coker thinks about it, launches it, and misses. Long rebound comes out to Hemlock. That is Watson with it. They with, are, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Hart is shooting 12.5% from behind the arc. Hemlock with the ball, 51 seconds left, leading 43-19. And they're up to 22% field goals. At one point in the first half, they were at 7.1%. Up top now, over in the corner, this is Miller. She loses the ball, and it's going to be Hart's ball in the uh, in the front in the backcourt. Oh, 36.5 seconds left. They're going to have Hicks on the trigger. Hicks triggers in to Van Ackmo, back to Hicks. We're down to 34 seconds left. Still in the backcourt, now she dribbles across and she's in the front court. Hicks now weaving, gets it over in the corner. Shot put up there, the right side put up and missed. And now we have a Hemlock coming back. I and think that was Rockwell on the shot. It was. Michaela Rockwell, the senior, getting some playing time. Yep. She had a good look at it, far in that deep in that left corner. Hemlock has been really killing a lot of time here. Well, I was going to say, are they going to play for the final shot in the third? And ball's tipped. <laughs> I thought we were going to get one in the face there. Triple put up, missed. Rebound comes away to Van Ackmo. But three quarters are in the books as uh, Hemlock leads this one 43 to 19. And uh, boy, just a doomed start for Hart. What was it at? I, I did yeah. not mark down what the first uh, first quarter score was. I got the halftime score. 21 to five at the end of the yeah. first quarter. And the halftime was 29 to seven. So, and there was that there was that part in the game where actually Hemlock went went cold for them. Yeah. Yep. And and, uh, and it was uh, it was Hart who could not convert. Take a look here. Some of the stats: Hemlock shooting field goals. 41.9%, but 22.2% from behind the arc. Free throws at 50%. And for Hart, field goals are 21.2%. They're at 10% on the 10 point field goals. Hart has 29 rebounds. And we have Hemlock with 14 rebounds. 17 turnovers, 17. Yeah, that's for Hart, a difference only right nine, there. Only nine for Hemlock, that's outstanding. Yeah, yeah, the 17 turnovers, Hart does not do that obviously very, very often. And, no. and you said they were coming into this game averaging what, like 68 a game, especially here in the tournament? No, that was uh, that was um, the other team that they beat. Um, oh, okay, my bad. Uh, but I can tell you what that stat was. 
They were well. They were averaging not bad, 61 points a game. Oh, okay. So giving up 34. Far, it was Hart that was averaging 58, giving up 30. Okay. So yeah, 61. So yeah, a long ways to go. Yeah, Hart's. If Hart hits their 58, they might win this if they could stop, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? Ah. <laughs> uh, After a while, you kind of just start running out of things to say. Right. Hemlock has played incredible. They have. And Hart has uh, just struggled. They and have just struggled tonight, this and afternoon. Been used to being here, um, Hemlock has. So, not that Hart was awed by the experience, I don't think, but it still is a new experience for you. Borsnick triggers back into uh, Finkbinder. Finkbinder being watched by Botel. Botel's played really smart with uh, having what, three fouls in the first half. Gets it back over to Hannah. Boar's next. She's going to put up a shot. Top of the key. Misses. Rebound pulled down by Hovey. Hovey Hovey's, Hovey's got a bunch of rebounds she in does. this game. This is Hicks now. Working it over to Van Ockmel. She's going to put up a shot and misses. Rebound falls in the hands of Boar's neck. Lauren Boar's neck. Yep. Or that was um, Hannah Boar's neck. Leaves it for Finkbeiner. Yeah, now their field goal percentage just will be under 10 from the three-point line. Watson with it now. Back up top to Boar's neck to Watson. Over to number four, who's into the game now. That is going to be Salo. Claire, Claire, uh, Clarita Salo. And a shot and an underhand scoop Thanks. score, Finkbeiner. That girl's good. Yeah, she's got, what, 13 on the uh, on the night. She had 15, I think. 15, yep. I was, yep, they didn't put it up yet. Here comes Hovey with it. Seven minutes left in this one, 45 19. And now Botel tries a three. She misses. Rebound comes out. We're going to have it's on the floor, and we're going to have a tie up. And it will be Hart Ball. I'm pretty decent at telling when shots are, are at or right in, you know, if right. a shot's in or at the rim. And so many of the shots here this afternoon, I just went, eh, right. that's not going to get there, or it's going to be long, or. Shot underneath. Oh, and that is even missing. It was a nice pass from out Botel, and Hicks couldn't convert, but Van Akmo comes away with it, and Mariana scores. So she keeps working out there, 45 21. Good hustle by her. She gets that offensive rebound, had to work hard for it, and then finishes it from the left side. Driving down now, right side is um, this is going to be Salo. Gets it up to uh, Borsnick. Hannah puts up a three, misses, and the ball's going to go out of bounds. It should be Hart's ball in the backcourt. That's the second one she shot. She's wide open. She's getting right. good looks. It's not making them. 45-21 is the score. 6.27 left in this game. And now we have uh, the ball knocked out of bounds. Uh, Hovey trying to get a pass out to Hicks. Hick, Hovey talking to Hicks, apparently not getting her where she wants her on the floor. Now seeing a little bit of the frustration yep. kind of seeping in here for Hart. Bounce pass to Hicks. Hannah Bort's next off. Hicks now pick, had to pick up her dribble because she was being hassled by Finkbinder. Fires it in the front court and coming back for it is Hart's Van Achmo. Tell you what, these Hemlock girls, they just defend, don't they? Yeah. They just roll them in one after another. Botel to Coker over to Van Achmo. She shoots, she misses. Rebound falls in the hands of Hemlock. That's Watson. Watson comes back, clears traffic. We're down to six minutes left. They might be down to like 7% now from behind the arc. Uh, think by the you know what? They're not taking bad shots. No. They're taking good shots. They're just not falling. Number 21, this is Victoria Hoffey. Gets it back to Finkbinder. She's going to drive. She goes down. There's going to be a foul called. Boy, that might be on Good Aspen Botel. I was completely blocked on that. She was the one. <laughs> I had that oh. official standing right in front of me. They're going to give it to Coker. Hey, we got the PA back. Hey, All there right. we go. So it's going to be on uh, Coker. That will be her second. Yeah, I believe so. For Coker. On the trigger now is Finkbeiner. Gets it over in the corner to Hoffy. Up top to Salo. Salo leaves it for Watson between the circles. Watching her as Hicks. We're down to 531 left. Dribble, crossover dribble by Watson. Tries to work it down. It's saved somehow by Borsnick, but she passes it and it's intercepted by Aspen uh, Botel. She dribbled through traffic and scored. Aspen Botel did that all herself. Nice job by Botel to get the steal, split the double team up and in. Beautiful finish. Now get it stopped. 
45 to 23. Bounce pass underneath the Borsnick, and Borsnick cannot handle it. Goes out of bounds. It'll be Hart's ball. So, all right, let's put together the run for a century yeah. here. Hicks on the trigger. 90 every, feet away. The problem is every time Hart starts to make a run, yeah. Hemlock seems to hit a three, and that stops the run, you know. Hicks is going to come out. Porter comes in for her. Porter now, five-second count on, gets it to Hovey. Hovey now being watched closely by Watson. She's double-teamed, gets it across the line. Yep, nice job with the crossover. Drives through traffic, gets it over to Porter. Porter shoots and misses. Rebound tipped, comes away to Borsnick. Borsnick has it, gets a pass out here, and uh, Hemlock will have it. That'll be uh, Finkbeiner. <clears throat> they're just, I would say they're in no hurry, but they're still getting up the floor pretty quick. They are, are. They, are they not in a foul? Who's that on? That's going to be on Porter, it looks like. I think so. That might be her second foul, I believe. No, I had a, I just have her for oh, a third. No, she got it. They were just slow putting it up. Okay. Pass underneath, uh, knocked away by Hubby, intercepted. Hubby comes back. And she's well, drawing a crowd. Stop. No, don't turn it oh, over. Oh, she did. Tried to pass it for us in the corner. This is Aspen Botel stealing it away. Good hustle by Botel. Botel comes back, passes over in the corner to Copenhaver. She shoots and scores a triple from the left side by Kelsey Copenhaver. 45 to 26 with 416, 415 left. And a timeout called by Hart. And uh, Hemlock's coach says, oh, my lead just got under 20. I'm nervous. Right. Kelsey Copenhaver. But Hart had a run going. Yeah. They started to get that run going. And every time it seemed like Hart gets a run going, right. Hemlock's been able to answer with the three. And their coach just went, you know what? Hart's got a little bit of a run going. I'm not. I'm going to try to take them out of that run. Yeah. Yeah, you know, again, uh, Van Acmo comes up with some uh, some big plays here for him. You got, uh, you know, that those role players, uh, Kelsey uh, Copenhaver. Uh, you know, Asma Votel, one of the starters, yeah. but man, Asma Votel does not have a half speed, does she? No, she does not. She's full speed all the time. She's got a high motor. Not giving high, up on high the motor. play. Playing all the way to the end. She's had three fouls. She's had to play smart, too, because she picked up two quick fouls and then picked up that third foul right as the buzzer was sounding. Yep, for the first half. At the first half, and she's, she's still played with three fouls and just played smart. Uh, the other girl with three fouls is Porter. For Hart, um, scoring-wise, you got uh, uh, Borsnick. That would be um, uh, that would be the number 33. That'd be Lauren Borsnick. She's got 17. Then you got uh, Watson with 15. And the balanced scoring, there's not much of it, but pretty balanced scoring for Hart. You got uh, Aspen uh, Botel with seven, and then you got um, uh, number uh, somebody's got five. I can't quite see who that is. It looks like it's Copenhaver. Yeah, with that three. And then you have uh, Van Ockmel and Hovey with four. Pressure defense now. Great and defense by Hart. Wow. Yeah. Pass over to Finkbinder. Finkbinder's going to shoot and score. A triple but, by, by her. And you know what I said? Hart gets a run going, and what happens? Hemlock hits a three, and they do. 48-26 now. Back comes. Oh, Aspen Botel puts up a shot and misses. Rebound brought down by Lauren uh, Borsnick. How many layups have they missed? A lot. Too many. Wow. Pass over right side. This is Miller thinking about it. Oh, she's going to drive on Van Acmo. Gets it back up top. Here's a three. Try from the right side. And the score by Finkbinder. Finkbinder's come alive here, 51-26. That was behind the college one. I mean, that yeah. was like that was way back there. This is Hubby driving right side. Down 322 left. Goes down to the floor. Ball almost stolen away. And now we're going to have a tie-up. And it will be Hemlock ball. Looks like Hannah Borsnick's going to get set to come in, as well as Alyssa Deerman for Ham, uh, Hemlock. And TV timeout. Timeout comes up right now, and uh, so they'll make their substitutions. And again, give me a chance to uh, talk about the folks that have made it possible all year long. And, we thank you for your continued support. North Grove Brewers, Van Dyke Mortgage, Foundation Systems of Michigan, Durga Insurance Group, Green Ridge Realty, Chris Dykema and Sarah Real, Big Stone Therapies, Grieve Law, North Muskegon, Shide Heating, Cooling and Plumbing, and uh, Cobo Banker, Dave Dusenberry. Can't thank those fine folks enough. Look like we have some special things planned for you during the spring sports. 
Gary Network is going to be doing some uh, baseball and some softball and working up uh, track. I don't know how that's going to work. Golf? Yeah. yeah, you know, they're talking about that. Yeah. Calling some golf. Hope they don't expect a lot of walking. There's going to be a lot of out of breath announcers here. If that's a cart. <laughs> senior cart. Right senior here. cart. Yeah, we're going to need cart. that. I get the senior cart. Hemlock brings the ball back. This is Watson passing it over to Finkbeiner. She's been hot. Another three, and he snacks down like her third three in this, uh, three, one, what, fourth five, quarter. Third in the second half. Yeah, I think, the second yeah. half. And four on the evening. 50, afternoon. 54 26 with 259 left. Over in the corner now, this is Porter bringing it back up top. Porter has it for Hart, leaves it for Hovey. Hovey now passes back over to Hicks. Hicks right corner, up top to Copenhaver. Kelsey gets it back over to Hicks with 2.43 left. Hicks back to Copenhaver. She's going to be left alone for a shot, misses it though. Rebound tipped, comes away to Hem Hemlock. Here comes uh, number one, this is Miller bringing it up court. Miller passes over right side to Finkbeiner, back to Miller. We're down to 2.27 left. 54-26 is the score. Hemlock. Oh. Pass underneath now. This is Dearman. Dearman boxed in, and, and an offensive foul called on yep. Dearman. And then cleared, cleared her out with the uh, left arm, shoulder. Yep. That'll be the first on her. And here come five new ones, John. Yep. With uh, 2.18 left, Coach Travis Rosma having his uh, starter set down. Hovey the last yep. of them, getting a nice hand. Actually, Van is going to stay out there, and so is Coker. They may come out in a minute. They may. Yep. You've got Aspen Botel. She's going to leave at some point here. Actually, Hicks is still out there. Yeah, they're going to uh, probably pull him off and let him get a salute here. Yep, you think so. Botel now drives, puts up a shot, and misses. Rebound falls into the hands of, uh, of um, Hemlock. Pass down in the corner. This is uh, Hoffy with it. Leaves it for number three, that's Hall. Hall now playing kind of a little bit of a weave here. Gets it back yeah. over to uh, Hoffy. Run and delay. So he's running delay with a second five. And underneath now, oh, there's a nice pass. A shot missed by Hemlock. Hemlock controlling the boards. And now here comes a shot by Hoffy, and she knocks down a three. 57-26 with 135 left. When your girls come off the bench, they start jacking threes, and they go in, you know it's your day. You do. Driving right side now, shot put up and missed by uh, number 32, that's Rockwell. And back comes Hemlock, ball knocked out of bounds. Gonna stay Hemlock's yep. ball. Boy, ball it's hell, knocks it out of bounds. And now you're gonna and see some uh, girls get saluted. It looks like Porter's gonna come yep. in. Botel. Aspen Botel will set down. Nice round of the applause. Sauer comes in. Setting down will be Coker. And for Hart, number 12, Selena Herrera. Nice Selena Herrera comes yeah. in. Yeah. Nice yeah. shot by Travis Rosma to get some of these girls in. Let them say, you know what, I played on this floor. And Both coaches doing that. Yep. Get as many girls in as possible. Gabby Nienheis comes in, checks into the game. And we got another one coming in. And getting a nice hand is uh, Van Achmel. Van Achmel's a senior. So you've got uh, Coker, Van Achmel, the seniors, and probably Esma Botel uh, off the floor right now. 57 26, 113 left. Pass over right side, Hemlock with the ball. Bringing it up here is number 30, that's Siler, Carly Siler. Works it over to Salo. Underneath now, pass over here. Right side, gets it back up top to Siler. Siler, a three-pointer shot, missed rebound, pulled down by Copenhaver. Copenhaver. She, she, she's running the point. She is. Copenhaver brings the ball up court. She's just a sophomore. Shot put up and missed. Ball battle for it, and <laughs> Hemlock tried to battle for it. You got Neen Heist battling for it. I think we had a jump ball situation. And it will be Hemlock ball. Copenhaver goes 90 feet. Kind of misses that little left hander. Right. 40.6 seconds left in this one. Looks like uh, Hemlock will be 
dancing with uh, Blissfield in the finals on Saturday. And the ball knocked out of bounds, gonna stay Hart's ball. Porter will put it in play. 37 seconds left in this one. Game that's really been all hemlock right from the yeah, start. Yeah, it has been. Drives right side, does Porter. Porter drives in and a foul's gonna be yep. called on Hemlock. I think that's going on 40 for them. Graham. Ava Graham, 5'7", sophomore, getting some playing time. Pass to Copenhaver, she shoots and misses. We have said that way too much tonight, Cal. Shoots and misses. Field goal percentage, 21.7%. And that's ouch. everything you need to know right ouch, there. Ouch, ouch, ouch. And turnovers in 19. Yeah, meanwhile, on the other end of the ledger, what you got, Hemlock, uh, 50%. Your, uh, no, 40, 42, 42%. Yep. I was yes. looking at the wrong one. You're looking at free throws. Driving. See, I told you too many numbers up there. Shot missed. Oh. Ooh, and we got uh, Hart Girl getting up a little bit slow here. Close. <laughs> she didn't stop her head from yeah. She almost hit her head hard on the floor. Yeah, it's to Sauer. Pass, or foul was on Hemlock, so we're down to 11 seconds, down to 10. Probably the final possession here for Hart. Six seconds, five seconds. This is Porter passing over to Copenhaver. Copenhaver is going to shoot and misses. And that is going to be the end of this one with Hemlock. The final score. A commanding 57 to 26 win. Over Hart here in the uh, Division Three state semifinal game from the Breslin Center. What a great run, though, for this Hart Pirate team. We're talking to Joe Tannis at halftime, says it's sure the wins are nice, and that's to a certain extent what it's about. But it's about the relationships. It's about building character. And I'll tell you what, these girls have plenty of character. They have played. Many times being uh, the underdog, despite the fact that they're 12 and 0 in their conference, despite the fact they're 24 and 3, probably not given a whole lot of respect at different times, or at least they feeling that they haven't been. But uh, they have done their community proud, yes, they their have. parents proud, and uh, their school proud. That's for sure. Absolutely. Things are alive and well in heart. Tough defeat here this afternoon here right. at the Breslin Center, but. Things are alive and well, and probably it's the most the most electric heart has ever been in many, many years when it comes to being there with their uh, athletics going on. Exactly that. Well, Cal, there's probably, why don't we do the final uh, scoring summary for the uh, the Heart Pirates here, as uh, there, yep. there wasn't nearly enough, no. but uh, only 26, so go for uh, it. Hicks with two, Coker with two, Porter with two. We gotta go to Van Ockmall with Four, Copenhagen with five, Hovey with six, and Botel with seven. For Hemlock, uh, Hannah Borsnick with two, Hoff with three, Miller six, Turner eight, Lauren Borsnick with 17, it seemed like 70, and Finkbinder with uh, 24 points here on the afternoon to lead everybody. Finkbinder with just electric especially in the second half. You bet to have. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to pack up here. I know uh, Scott and uh, Bill have got some filming to do, so we'll pack up our gear here and uh, wait to uh, get on out of here. But we want to say what a great year. want to thank all the winter sports teams. Uh, Hart took us the uh, farthest down here to the Breslin Center, but we had a great throw with uh, a lot of the, uh, the girls and the boys this year in uh, basketball and uh, the wrestling uh, teams of uh, did us uh, proud yeah. as well. So, again, and our, our sponsors could not do this without them. One final time for the winter sports season, North Grove Brewers, Van Dyke Mortgage, Foundation Systems of Michigan, Durga Insurance Group, Green Ridge Realty, Chris Dykema and Sarah Reel, Big Stone Therapies, uh, Grieve Law of uh, North Muskegon, Shide Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, and Dave Dusenberry, good friend, Coldwell Banker. So, from a broadcast partner, Cal. A lot of fun. It's been a great season so far, and hopefully we will be seeing you in the springtime. Looking forward to a very ambitious uh, spring season here on Catchmart. Yeah. And uh, looking forward to calling some sports we haven't called in a while, if ever. So, we'll see how that all goes. But okay. uh, 
Yeah, we're looking forward to that. Thanks again, everybody. Thanks for all the folks that have uh, watched on the stream. Over a thousand we saw, so that was uh, nice. that was good. We wish we could have brought you better news. That's for sure. But uh, boy, you uh, got to be heart proud. That's for sure. They go down to defeat to a very tough uh, Hemlock team, 57 to 26. From a broadcast partner, Cal, great job as usual, partner. A lot, a lot of fun here this afternoon, partner. Great call all season long by you. Thank you. You too. You are incredible at what you do. All right. Checks in the mail, Cal. Okay. I'll take it. <laughs> I want to thank Bill. Add an extra zero. <laughs> yeah. Bill and Scott, be sure to check the uh, the content on Catchmark Sports Net, Net for what they'll be doing with the interviews and things like that as I will recap uh, this uh, this uh, run for the uh, Hart Pirates. Again, final score, final time, 57 Hemlock, 26 for Hart. Have yourself a good afternoon, everybody.